week, another week, episode 15. Slightly empty house today. You still got myself. And me, Isaac. And like Keith as well. When bloody um, Come throwing, on. It, throwing it back. Retro. Come what on. year is that one now? So you seven to or nine. Yeah, all right, Narek. <laughs> you got the question, you got the answer, innit? <laughs> yeah, all right. Torres all right. doing his business in the shirt, you know what I mean? Mm, what, 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 what trophies did you win in that shirt? <sighs> Don't worry about that, man. <laughs> I, if you I, want to do a, a recent trophy thing, no, you can, I, innit? I thought you were going to say Champions League. I thought you were going to say Champions no, League. No, we got to the final in that. Is that the yeah, final Milan. where Christmas got that goal? No, no, no. But no. that's the final you lot won. Yeah. yeah. What final then? Who did you play against in that final? AC Milan. Milan. Two, two, years, years, two years later. 2 won. That Kai scored that goal. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's I mean, when AC was going in, boy. Just to say, though, um, now, I think a four-year run, an English team got to the final consecutively because yeah. it, it was, was us, us Arsenal us, us, us United, United and Chelsea yeah. yeah United and Chelsea yeah crazy isn't it yeah, well, times change there was a year gap and then it was United Again. and Barca yeah yeah. so fight uh, yes. it, was, it was powerful them times yeah it was, it was man it was crazy man Being things in Europe then go Fergie <laughs> on a roll on a roll go on in well look we're at that time of the year where every other tweet Every other thing is about who's linked to it where, who's going where. There's been lots of spirited debate about certain managers' decisions. We'll come on to that. Managers are losing their job, unfortunately. Mm. Some managers are getting jobs. We're still waiting for certain men to turn up. Um, after pocketing a lot of severance. Uh, <laughs> the supporters out there, new bed, new money and that. But he's, uh, he's not in a rush. <laughs> he's he suit shopping, isn't he? Well, I guess oh, so. Right. I guess so. But to that to that point, then this the whole ITK journalist thing now. I don't even know if I want to call them a journalist. I think there are probably journalists out there who would not be happy with me calling them journalists. Scoff at the... Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. The well, label. I think some of them are journalists. So I think you've got people like I I'm I'm mainly no Liverpool ones, like Paul Joyce, who is a, a journalist, mm-hmm. etc. But the main one who we're gonna to refer to is Fabrice. Fabrice. <laughs> Fab, who's kind of, not that he's come out of nowhere, but over the last, say, four or five years, mm. he's appeared to be the go to guy for everybody's transfer news. Yeah, and I think it, it talks to some of the stuff we've talked about before, right? Where now we live in an age where it's all about they've made tra- the transfer window, the transfer um, process, a drama of its own. Obviously, Sky, they've made transfer deadline day a whole flipping soap opera. Um, so now, actually, being the person that comes out, I don't know if speed matters anymore, actually, because everyone throws everything out there. But being the person who can be relied on with some credible information of what's happening to the point where people will say to you, listen, on two Fabrizio said, here we go. <laughs> I don't believe it. Mm. You know, people used to say, until I see the yellow bar. Yes, that's, that's, that's true. Yeah, that's, that's true. Now it's oh, here we go. Um, I mean, what can what what could be negative about what they're doing, Isaac? Like, what what where is the damage? Where is the downside to this? Right? Because Twitter and all these things, they're instant. We'd have to wait for the paper. The the traditional journalists they have to go through certain checks and balances before they can write stuff. And even now, it's online. If I'm at the Guardian and I need to write an article about a transfer, some it has to go through some checks and balances. For me, I can just tweet and it's there. I think I think there's a I think there's a need. It's all, it's, it all comes down for me. It all comes down to instant gratification. Yeah, you know? and I feel like there's a need to just be right. Yeah, yeah. And what you've got is this whole industry of ITKs. Everyone just throwing out rumors and things that they they know or heard or source. They can't you know uncredit uncredible sources. Um, and it's, a, it's an element of just throw something at the wall until it sticks. Right? Mm. And if you do that a number of times, all of a sudden you become a trusted source. Right? Yeah. And it's that gratification that comes with it. Oh, I'm, I'm the guy. I'm the, I'm the guy to go to. Because essentially that's how what, Fred Rom has built his reputation, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. not, I'm, not, I'm not comparing him to an ITK of just throwing it against the wall. But no, no, he's but... built up a network of sources, incredible contacts. He was putting stuff out there and then and over sticking, time yeah. and it was sticking and everyone's gone, oh, this guy's 
Yeah, the guy he's talking to. about. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, he must know. He must know. Yeah. And then, fortunately for him, he's he's obviously got the catchphrase. Here we go. Yeah. You know, he's he's branded himself. Yeah. And he's Somewhere become the credible but guy. This is cool, right? Yeah. And I feel like everyone's just trying to catch that same fire. They're mm. trying to catch that same whirlwind of like, okay, just follow his blueprint, put stuff out there. Become a reliable source. Everyone's mm. going to keep coming to me. I'm going to hopefully get to catch the same buzz and, you know, become a trusted source. It's just, uh, for me, it's all about instant gratification. People just, they don't want to be right anymore. They don't want to be quit first. Then. I mean, not that they don't want to be right. They want to be first anymore because mm. I, I, there was a point where it was about who was first. Yep. They don't want to be first anymore. They just want to be right. Yeah. And they want that little buzz that comes with it. That's what it feels like to me. I think the other thing as well is when you get someone like uh, Fab who's gained some credibility, then now it's advantageous to you if you're in the ecosystem for him to pull certain news out for you, right? Yeah. It would surprise me if, you know, some of his stuff's coming from agents, some of his stuff's coming from people within the club, you know, mm-hmm. anonymous sources because it serves, you know, if you're putting that news out there that this club is interested. And they might, it's not a lie, but that becoming public information when it ordinarily wouldn't be, can give you an advantage. So I would love to know, now that he's seen as a trusted source and people take what he says a little bit more, probably a level, credibility-wise, probably a level below, you know, certain certified journalists. Well, actually, to some people, they probably don't even care for journalists. They don't like your mainstream journalists who are now on Twitter. Yeah. Um, then, then he's a tool that you can use. He's a tool in your armory to mm. to get certain news and stuff out there. It's interesting. I saw a video the other day where somehow he's bucked up on someone on the phone who was basically saying he doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah, he that. just throws stuff around, blah, blah, blah. And I think Fab DM'd him and said, no, listen, this is my job. Like, I work 20 hours a day. This is not some joke. Take me on the phone all the time. Like, this is, this is my livelihood. This is what I do. And like, he did have the guy to, to call him. I think the guy thought it was bad. Fab is laid. Yeah, they, they, had, they, had, they, had, they, had, they had a phone conversation. <laughs> and Fab was like, you've been saying X, Y, Z. And the guy was like, well, no, no, no. I'm just trying oh, to say X, Z. Yeah, like the moonwalking was, was, was swift. crazy. <laughs> and it's like, he put, he put out, so he recorded the call. So Fab didn't put it out. He recorded the call as if to say, oh yeah, I've kind of drawn out Fab. But it's like, it backfired, well, it? yeah, it's like, no, it? you said, you said Fab is kind of not a reliable source, etc. But he'd come out and said, well, no, this is what I do. I've got the credibility in the bank. And Fab was like, you're sitting there in your bedroom <laughs> writing rubbish ah, about me. Wow. I work hard for this. Da, 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 da. You could just, you could hear the anguish in his voice. Like, yeah. mate, but, I've worked to, you know, this is, this is it now these days, right? You work to build your account. You work, that is, that is the the tangible output of all the hours and all the yeah, people. Yeah. And then some guy's just going to be tapping away just to get some clout. The fact that he recorded it and then he put it out there tells you everything you need to know about that. Yeah, that yeah. Individual, right? So I, I, got, I kind of got two points on this. I think one, he's become a little bit of a victim of his own success. Sex, yeah. his own success because... In what sense? Just in terms of because he's, he's been right so many times if he if he makes a mistake, it's like oh you well, you don't know everything oh you know how mm. like kind of online people that mm. typical build you up to yeah, break yeah. It and up. it's kind of a bit like um Dylan Bagley like when he was kind of the Spanish correspondent for Sky etc. Have, have I got the name wrong? Uh, uh, Robert Tab. Yeah. Gillian Bagley. Have I got it wrong? <laughs> <laughs> you know who I'm talking about, anyway. <laughs> I, I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I didn't at first. That's why I looked at you. <laughs> okay, what? Come on. As I at give Jim, me the pronunciation. Come on. Just... <laughs> come on. Give me the give me the pronunciation. I don't want to hear laughter. Uh, I want I want okay. correction. Go no, on. Bro, step up to me. the plate. Step not up. Okay, me. if you're not gonna step up to the plate, I don't want to hear. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Just because I don't know how to do it doesn't mean I can't tell if you did it wrong. All right. Because I, I was like, who? And then it's only when he said, when, he, when we Gilliam. both looked, at, I was like, oh, I know who you're talking. You know, about. you knew I was talking. I know who you're talking about. All right, all right. So, yeah. So he kind of, again, he kind of was the go- the go-to guy, and then he just kind of yeah. disappeared, didn't it? It might, it might be because he didn't keep up with like the the Twitter. No, but you know why? I think he. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, GB. Yeah, he he tried to branch out, right? So instead of being just a transfer ITK, he wanted to become like this, uh, like 
Spanish football expert, you know. He knows the inner workings of the clubs. He knows how they, he knows the people, all of that kind of stuff. And I just feel like he probably did that in a way that doesn't necessarily fit the structure now. I mean, he would say he's fine and he's still getting work on TV oh, yeah, and stuff. I, f- I, I think it was, I think he did, what he was doing was a good thing, mm. but I think the timing of it yeah, is yeah. what went, went against him because yeah. he did it just as Twitter became the source. Yeah, and the ITK. Yeah. The it. ITK started it blowing up. So, and he didn't go... In the, in the midst of trying to become this front-facing um, football expert, yeah. he took his eye off of what, yeah, was, what was going on. What yeah, was going on over here. And then when he started... And that allowed for Fab to... to sneak it. Yeah, and like yeah. when he started doing the whole, oh, the Premier League should give you up money, everyone looked at him like, all right. <laughs> yeah. Cheers, fella. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I think because Fab has done so well, I think mm. people kind of plotting on his downfall. And then the second point is because I think people have seen the traction that he'd gain for what he does, yeah. you're just getting random football yeah. accounts now just posting generic news, whether it's right or wrong, yeah. just for retweets. Mm-hmm. And engagement and likes, and then that's being shared among like the football community. So I, I'm in quite a few football groups, and every day I'm getting this. This is happening. This transfer is happening. And I'm like, wait till they're holding the shirt. Like, well, that, that, and that's the point I'm at now. I'm, it's I'm like, so I'm frustrating. Out, I'm, I'm even one step that. away from that. Still. I'm like, who is that source? Like, I don't even mind it. Not they're not holding the shirt yet, but who are you? T- you just tweet it because it suits your agenda or whatever. Even sometimes when it's Stuff that would be good for Arsenal. Mm. I'm like, bro, who is that? Yeah. I've never heard of total, total sports, sports.com. <laughs> like, who is that? What is this? Come on, man. And and I find that people that they, they just forward stuff blindly, mindlessly, they don't yeah. check anything. Or they see they've got a lot of followers. Yeah. Followers. Or a lot of retweets <laughs> or whatever. I think the other interesting thing is how the some people have narrowed it down. So if you look at David Ornstein, mm-hmm. you know, he's a trusted source for Arsenal news. Yeah, you know, uh, okay. So as an Arsenal okay, fan, to be honest, now even more so than 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 Fab, if I want to know something that's about Arsenal player, well, I just wait for Ornstein. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, once he tweets it, or if like, I know someone's like, got a direct line in, like Echo for Liverpool. Yeah, Joyce. That's it. Yeah, Joyce. Yeah. 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 yeah, unless like we know people that know people directly. Fine, yeah. take that. But if it's just out in the ether, bro, just wait for Ornstein. But again, it's got to that point where. You got someone you go through for Liverpool news. There's probably someone that my United fans mm. yeah. would go to, etc. So I think that's the other dimension where it's gone, where you can kind of build that. And with the growth of things like the Athletic, what Austin has done very well is, yes, you'll get the ITK stuff from me on Twitter, mm. but you'll get my proper Breakdown, journalistic output analysis, yeah, on on the Athletic and on the podcast, etc. So I think he's got the, I think he's got a good balance. Um, this isn't a plug, by the way, but if you want to sponsor us. Athletic. Yeah, yeah. I'm true, it? <laughs> Quick acquisition in that. Can I just jump in? Uh, if you don't know, ITK stands for In The Know. Yes. Just for yeah, those yeah. who don't yeah. know. My mum would say it stands for something else, but I'll tell you that after. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't, look, I don't think they're, I don't think they're negative as such. I think they create lots of wannabes, like you said. And to be honest, with the whole Twitter and football thing, there's <clears> much worse <throat> things that we need to figure out before <laughs> ITK is right. Yeah. All the idiots that, that just are doing mad stuff just for attention and clicks, the, the caricatures, all the people that just say whatever they want to say. But I do think that we need to get weaned off this transfer saga drug thing somehow, man. Like, we just need to just go back. I don't, I, I don't remember a time where you might hear about the biggest players, but you just go with it and then, oh yeah, the deal's done. The yeah. thing is turned up. It's, it's like yeah. everyone. Yeah. Everyone wants to know what's happening and if nothing's happening, it's like, oh, why are the owners not doing this? What's going on? Rare, rare, rare. And it's like, in, in one aspect, it's good that we can kind of have so much access to like our football club that we support, mm-hmm. etc. But on the negative side, it's a, again, a word we've used many times, the entitlement of, of football fans in it. It's toxic. They feel that they, they should be involved in everything that's going on and know everything that's going on every single minute of every day. Well, and, <laughs> someone said to me the other day, oh, oh, what? Why is it taking so long for them to like turn around another bid for the caress? I said, I said, how many hundred million pound deals have you done? <laughs> how quick should it be? I don't understand. Well, how, do you think, do you think my man just literally gone, all right, yeah, um, they declined it. All right, uh, let me just, football uh, manager, innit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, just <laughs> these, he just went on the team chat. I said, oh, lads, 
I need another 20 million. <laughs> right. And that's the other thing. People always seem to think they have the full picture. So, mm. you know, w- when they rejected the, the first and second Declan Rice bids from Arsenal, for example, we don't know exactly what they rejected. Was it the amount? Was it the structure of the payments? Was it both? Who knows? Was it the bonuses you wanted to add on? You know, or is it the timing of those bonuses? How you spread them out? Maybe want a bit more money for when you win the FA Cup, for Premier League and FA Cup. Mm. Yeah. And we'll take less for the Champions League because those mm. two are more likely. You just don't know. So when I now need to go back and say, hey guys, I need another 10 million on the transfer <laughs> fee and they want to do this and do that. You've got to strategize. You've got to move your teams. Man, that's it for this work. Go home. Go to the gym. Have dinner. And then go to work the next day. So... It just sometimes when people talk in and they just forget this stuff, it just There's a lack of critical thinking. Yeah, yeah. bro. That's the real pandemic, you know. <laughs> the lack of critical thinking. Yeah, they is just, the real pandemic. They just see it in black and white, innit? They see Team X rejected Y million from Team B. No, but go back to your time and point. Why isn't someone doing something about this? Now, now, now. Because I want to update. Now, now, now. <laughs> go sign Declan now. Do the press conference at 11 p.m. Now. I want to sit on Sky. Now. Yeah. You know. But the thing is, like, you sign, you sign Declan, then the next day, they're like, who's next? Like, it, it's, it's never ending, isn't it? It's like... Well, forget the players that are already there as well. Forget yeah. them. We just keep adding players. Just yeah. keep adding players. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I'm, I'm seeing it from, like, a Liverpool standpoint. It's like, oh, they haven't done anything. I was like, mate, we signed McAllister, like, two weeks ago. Like, think things are in, in the works, isn't it? Like, and again, context. You've done another Liverpool type deal where a player that everyone thought was going to cost you 80 million, whatever, blah, blah, blah. He's rocked up for 35 or 40 million plus bonuses. Bruv, I, as a Liverpool fan, bruv, chill. That was done so early. Relax. Let it get it right. I'd rather that personally than maybe what my United fans have suffered for the last few years. Yeah. Overpaying, blah, blah, blah. But like you said, I think that's what I mean. It's just a bit of a drug. Everyone's hooked in. It's this, it's that. Just relax, just relax. So, I mean, but then moving on to onto the transfer piece, um, another segment of it. What what we've seen what City did last season, right? Mm-hmm. They continue to spend the money well, in my opinion. Mm. They just wrapped up another deal, haven't they? Well, so so what deal? Is that done? Well, yeah, they won last, last I read, euros for Last I read, they they it was they were quoted a big fee and they just agreed. They said, all right, well, well, that's, so that right. contradicts my next point. All right. um, <laughs> so I was going to say they got to a point now where players want to be part of that movement so much. You can make relatively astute signings on obviously large wages, but maybe not as large as you would if you were someone else. Yeah. That coverage is still. You know, 30 million or something for him. I think that's the still. I don't care if he's 29 going on 30. That is a steal for him. Mm. Wages wise, they agreed terms with him apparently two weeks ago. So that probably wasn't hard. But I reckon if Arsenal or Liverpool goes for him, I think that deal's slightly different. I think he wants certain things. He, he probably feels like the value he's bringing, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, more but no one will give them credit for picking up a coverage at that price. And then he'll go on to play 40 games next season and be crucial to it. But he's our so big spending Man City. Um, and I, I, it's what do other teams need to do transfer wise so we can have a three or four horse race next season or the year after? I think, <laughs> as ever, if you're if you're not in a situation, okay, so City are in a situation where they've got number one, they've got they've got a few things that are going their way, right? They've got the money, obviously. Mm-hmm. They've got the funds to buy the players. They've got the arguably arguably the best manager in the world, and that's a that's a pull um, in itself. Mm-hmm. As a player, you're gonna want to play for the best coach. He's gonna get the best out of you. Well, I had company say today, I wish I played for Pep when I was 19. <laughs> there, you <go. laughs> there you go. Like you're you're playing for a coach who's gonna bring arguably bring out the best in you. Mm. Right. And then you're playing you're going to a team that are almost guaranteed to win trophies. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, they're as close to as a, as certified as a lock on to win trophies as as you can get. Right. Mm. So I think for City They've got all of that going in their favour. So for the other clubs, you're 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 going up a greasy slope, right? So you definitely... I think there's another bit as well, bro. Just to add to that, 
they're a really well run club. So the whole football operation, yeah, you know, director of football. I am not even going to try and say his name because that would be it. Chicky. Like, uh, uh, cheers. Yeah. Uh, I would have just Hall of Fame straight away. Um, you know, he's there. They got the head of football operations, and it's well noted. No matter how they source their funds, that they run the club. They run the club very, very well. Yeah. Even the whole uh, Gondogan situation. Yeah. They were only offered him one year, plus one year option. Because nah, yeah, when I said yeah. it the other way before, you know, I tried to, tried to no, get no, on no, to no, me. No, when no, I said Gondo no, one, you know, yeah. tried to get on to me. They're like, no, no, like, no, 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 no. So you can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways. It's one or the other. So I've done the other one for you. And you're still... Anyway. Um, and they said, as much as we wanted him, Pep wanted him. Pep tried to put pressure on. At your age, one plus one. Little bit increment on your wages. And that was it. And he said, Barcelona offered him two guaranteed. Yeah. Plus the option of a one year after. So he left. So I think you got to your two earlier points. Then the super well run club. So the stability is kind of there. So yeah, sorry, go on. Yeah, no. I, I, and I, so you're looking at all of that, right? So as another club, <laughs> whether it's Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea, United, whoever it is. Just forget. You you literally <laughs> have to, You it's pretty much that. You literally have to have a scouting system that is A1 or you have to have the Tony Bloomfield uh, be, um, database, 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 yeah. database yeah. right? And then have the funds to go and get the players Within those da- databases, your 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 player purchases, you there's less margin for error than for than yeah, City, right? Yeah. You have yeah. to bring in the right players that are going to come in, add value straight away. Yeah, they need to you the don't running. you don't even have the luxury of a, of a player coming in and going and and you know, oh, we've got to give him a bed in. Like, like the process. luxury they had of giving hundred million Jack Greedy some time to bed in and get into yeah. ways. So but, can afford not, to do. It's that. not even Jack Greedy. Like you look at. John Stones has been there four, five, five years, mm. and you can only say now he like nah, relax me. He had a good spot. He had a, he had a year and a half before where he was. No, I was saying like he's, he he's been good, but it's now everyone's like wow kind of thing. Even mm. like okay, I, I lazy. understand like, what he's saying. Yeah, like because they, but Stones at Barnsley, if you saw him then, and then if you saw him in his first like what two maybe three seasons, he didn't look. Like he was going to hit the potential. Yeah. He was I don't feel like when he got there, there was a bit of a dip. Then, then he had a but period now, where he played really well, super well. But remember, he was back in the England team. He was starting, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Then he got injured. That's when Laporte came, He's arguably what? City's the Eng- England's best defender right now. Yes, I would yeah, Oh, say. yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah Without him, a him and Walker. Yeah, you could say that. Yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. No, it's true. So City have that, that, that luxury to allow players to bed in. No mm. one else has that. What are you saying? What are you saying, Keith? What are you saying? So... As I, I just painted a bleak picture for us. I know, but... <laughs> I just think it is what it is. Yeah. I, no, it's true, it's true. I think for anyone that wants to challenge City, mm. one, whoever you sign, you've got to have a, a generous injury kind of run with your team in it. Mm. So like, I know you can say I'll bring it back to Liverpool, but when we won the league, and the couple of years that we challenged City, we, we barely had any, any injuries. Like we, <laughs> we, we, we could pretty much put out a consistent team. Think about it. We were playing Genie, Milner and Hendo religiously. Why do you think they're so burnt <laughs> out right now, bro? <laughs> oh, Reli- the, front religiously. Three, the front three were... But Thiago wasn't about yet. Yeah. No, See, yeah. Season before last, again, we had the consistent front three yeah. of, of Mane, Saleh, Firmino, mm. then brought in Luis Diaz. Mm. Cons- consistency, like so, you need that. You need that in your favor. Mm. You need all your players, or at least ten of your players, yeah. playing at like minimum seven point five. Nah, man. Each week, eight point five. <laughs> no, I, said, I think it's eight point five still. Okay, eight, eight. I okay, eight. Let's say, let's go eight. Yeah. Like, minimum, eight. you need ten players week in week out. Whoever comes in, yeah, has got to be at, at the races. Got to play at eight for like thirty two games. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> like, Literally. And then if it's not the same 32 games, then hopefully the spread covers the 38, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, you, you've got to have that. Yeah, mad. And then, like I said, you've got to, whoever you sign. Well, remember, link it back to transfers. So, yeah. Whoever yeah, you saying, sign, whoever, whoever you yeah. sign has got to hit the ground running pretty much. See, I'm, I'm a bit of an idealist, isn't it? So, I, I believe, you know, in in football, evening things out. Am I convincing? <laughs> <laughs> so no, no, generally I think I think the thing that Pep said actually 
kind of resonates a bit. He's like, look, only way I can keep winning, <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of harsh, is by changing the players. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, it's hard to be motivated. He's like, if I said to you, you were the best in the world for a period of time, very, very, very few people in any sport, in any walk of life, could then get up again and say, I want to do that again. Yeah. yeah. So he's like, I've got to keep changing the team. Especially in a team sport. Like if it's an individual, you can yeah. say fair enough. But so I think I think in the transfer market, what clubs need to do, and it sounds so obvious, but and I would I would like to think that people at that elite level of the game, this is what they're doing all the time. But sometimes they're signing to say otherwise, right? And I think what the clubs do need to do is just start be as strategic as they can with the signings. Right? Don't fall into the trap of the big, hefty signings. I think we talked about this in the group before. Very, very few big signings work out. Like, if you look at any record signings, big blockbuster signings, over the years, very few of them work out. And I actually think what a lot of clubs can do to knock City off the perch is to look at the kind of players City are signing. Because apart from Grealish, how many other players are they signing? And they're going to do it now with, with my man, but... How many, if we look at their whole list, how many of them did they sign and they were blockbuster record signings? They're not many. Yeah. Whereas everyone else has been breaking records on a regular basis. Man so, United. Yeah, what City have been good at is staying in that 50, 60 bracket. Yeah. Without kind of exposing themselves to kind of being like, oh, they've broken a record every year, et cetera. Um, and I think it's played, it's, 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 it's played, it's played itself out well. Like, you know, here's a question. Do you think, all right, looking at the players that, that City or Pep has brought, has brought in yep. and then kind of looking at uh, other teams' purchases, yep. in order to stay within that range, you kind of have to look at players, certain types of players that fit your system, right? True. I'm not, at, I'm not in the market to buy who's hot at the moment or I'm not in the market to buy the best. I'm in coach. the market to buy what, what works, works. What works yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So you're going after players bar Jack Grealish yeah. or Harry Kane mm. who they were linked to and uh, you're going after players who are not quite sort of And Haaland to a certain extent like the buyout clause saved them they would have yeah. paid the 100 million they would have There's yeah. no buyout clause yeah. but you're, you're in the <laughs> you're yeah. damn near yeah. touching you're breaking your contract numbers yeah. Exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. So bar those types of players mm. He's, but he's bringing in players that are hardly sought after. Or if they are, there's not that much. There's a, there's a few question marks. But Pep's obviously seen something in them to bring them in. Cut price deal. Or, or it cut price-ish deal. And they work and they fit in the system, right? Yeah. Whereas you look at Liverpool, who had to spend 70 plus, at, which was a big transfer at the time. Yeah. Or Man United, who had to pay 90 plus for uh, Pogba. Or have an 80 from Mokwaya. But, but I think it's no coincidence. I, I mean, yeah, can you see what I, I'm trying to say here? But I, I think mean, it's no coincidence that you guys have been the closest to them in recent years because you're also another club. Whilst you spent big... We also sold big as well. Well, not even that. You spent big on players because... More because the clubs, you know, wanted the value of letting them go rather than they were the in-fashion player at the time, right? So lots of people could have signed Van Dyke, <clears throat> But as we heard all the stories, they thought he wasn't this and he wasn't that, blah, blah, blah. And Southampton said, look, we know he's going to be a quality player. Other people didn't believe that, so they didn't want to match what you paid. And you paid it and it's worked out well. Alisson is the same. At the time, I think Alisson and Kepra were the big Yeah, we, we, broke, we broke the world record for a goalkeeper right? and they broke it a few so, years later. And then, so through your spine, but again, who else? Kepa, uh, I mean, Alisson, Van Dijk. Who was the other? We bought Fabinho for just shy of 50. But but again, was he another trendy player? He, he wasn't no. someone that was... They, the, the thing is, like, there were players that were Because that Monaco known. team were... Yeah, yeah, yeah. there were players that know, but no one... There wasn't, like, a clamour yeah. over them. And I, and I think that's what I like saying. Like, a lot of the City signings, there's been no clamour over yeah. them. Yeah, and I'm saying there's no coincidence yeah. that you're kind of the other team that, was do, that were doing that. No coincidence that you get you guys are up there. So you make those kind of good signings. And I and I still see other clubs doing some of the same. Like even to this day, on the limited evidence, I don't understand why Arsenal and Chelsea were doing hammer and tongs over Modric. There, there was the limited sample of information. He had a few games in Champions League, 
But he had only played 30 professional games, I think, stupid at that point. And I just sometimes from the outside, it just looks like. Sorry, M- Modric? Yeah. What do you Modric. Mo- Modric. Oh, Modric. Sorry, yeah, I yeah. said Modric. Sorry. No, no, Modric. Yeah. And I was thinking from the out, obviously, you've got your analysts, you've got your data. But so, it, sometimes it just does feel like this is a. If we need to get him so no one else, before someone else does. Type but of this advice. is where your director of football comes in. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. A good director yeah. of football will sift through the nonsense. You yeah. will find they will work with the scouting team or whoever and find and the manager as well to an mm. extent and find the right players mm. rather than just the Ed Woodward's approach and just going <laughs> yeah. who's who's hot? Yeah, yeah, How am I gonna appease the fans and the club. shareholders? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who's gonna sell shirts? Exactly. But that approach could go wrong. I mean, you could argue Wenger did that for the second half, but I would say that went wrong for the second half of Tinder because I think he changed the profile of the players when everyone else was going the other way. Mm. Went from big, strong players, Vieira, Zoriz, Petit, all of that, um, to small technical players. And Mourinho was standing up with teams of six foot four, four players. <laughs> bullies. Every week, bullies with techers. <laughs> um, and it's the same with City. Again, no one really talks about it, but they're not, they're not, they're, overall, they're a pretty large team than, yeah. than they are a smaller team. He's got, what, two or three small men and then everyone else is, is you know, is your 5'11s, your 60s. That's, that's not an accident, right? Um, so I do think that the clubs have to be, have to be more strategic with their, with their signings. And, again, it's stating the obvious, but they've got to go out there and, but you've got to have the coach that can do that. So, if you're Man City and you're right at the top, you, you could think, well, actually, we're just going to go and cherry pick the best. But to your point, when you've got a coach like Pep and a coaching staff on the system, when you pick someone from Benfica, you know, Benfica to five times champions of England and Champions League finalists, it's, it's a big jump. It's yeah, not, massive. you know, most players have to make one or two steps. When you pluck people from there or from, a, from a, another kind of European League team, you've got to have faith that that's going to come, come, come true. And I think other big clubs, they have this attitude of, nah, you know what? You go to that League One team first or you go to that next and then we'll see if you're ready for Arsenal or for Chelsea. And I think they need to stop doing that. If someone's got the talent, go and pick them up. We need to skip that step. We're not that team anymore. And we need to see the value in those players because we're not going to be a club. You know, we're going to sign the Rice for 100 million, hopefully. I don't think you're going to see too many of those signings, bro. I think for the next couple of years, the signings we make, one, we'll have to sell to buy it, and two, obviously inflation, but I think we stick around the have a sort of range. We're going to be buying 60, 70 million. But the thing, you know Rice is only that price because he's English, isn't it? Like, and there's a buzz yeah, around I, him yeah, at the moment. I like, well, I like for like for Rice, that's another nationality. You're, you're paying nowhere near 100 million for them. Yeah, and, and, and I get you, it. Like, we discussed this with the homegrown situation. Yeah. That's the England tap. But I would argue English that there's stuff. some things that there's not another play in the league because there's some things that Rice gives you that you won't get if you buy someone abroad, right? Yeah. So is there someone who's not English in the league that ticks all the boxes that Rice does? Young, blah, 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 blah. Who, who's another player in the league you could buy instead of Rice in the Premier League? Who could you buy instead of Declan Rice? Casado? Yeah. But we've been outpriced on the wages of right <laughs> on that one. I think Chelsea have come with the with the ATM <laughs> on that one. Um, but yeah, you're right. So... Yeah, and, and you're... Well, but again, how many games has Casado played in the Prem? How many games has Declan Rice played in the Prem? You can do the pros and yeah, cons. Yeah, I can yeah, imagine yeah. him having a meeting like this and he's like, okay, Casado, whiteboard. <laughs> do you yeah, know what I mean? Not, not as much. So yeah. I agree, there's English tax, but I also think there are things that his Premier League experience... There are, there are reasons you can add up and say, you know what's best paying it because the risk we take with X, Y, Z. Um, yeah, and the thing as well... As fans, we shouldn't really be hung up on the price, innit? Like you pay I what agree. you pay what someone's worth. Like I know like the evolution of football is like ten years ago you would have paid this price and that would have got you this kind of player. Forget that. If you want someone and they're gonna better your team, pay the money in it. Like that's and, then, and everyone's a bet. I'd rather we paid a hundred million for a player and it came and it came through than pay thirty million for a player and it, and it it's, it's a waste, it's what it's a wash. I'd rather I'd rather do that. But again, it goes back to my point earlier. The myself. only problem, the only problem with that is you pay a hundred mil now, and you got like less you said, money to buy other players. Exactly, you've yeah. got less money, and then what's yeah. the approach for next yeah. season? Like so, you said, we we spend big now. It's the more, it's the, more than likely we're not going to spend big over the next I don't few so. windows. Even if we continuously and we're have to sell to buy. Yeah, and I think even if we continuously 
um, make Champions League, which I think is the way clubs should go now. I think I think the tempered spending and the right, that's the way it should go. You know, mm. you guys have been in the Champions League consecutively for what, six years? Seven, I think. Six, so. seven years. You'd have got to the final twice. Um, you know, I think in the final season, you get to see it in the final in the Champions League. It's a lot of money. Um, you got to the Champions League final three times. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Uh, I was asking you. Know, you know, for clarity, you know. Was asking. So those seasons add a lot of money to bottom line, you know, 90 yeah, to 100 million, does. right? So we still should. We still should. I also, what I take from this conversation is as well, yeah. Can you win the league if Man City don't slip up? Because oh. no, what know. we're effectively saying, if Man City, because like, there was so. a blip last season where they weren't in there, but that's how Arsenal kept winning their games and what they did. <clears> if Man City kind of have a, a steady season, no blips, which even they have. What, no no chance for you to win in the league? I mean, Liverpool did, or did, did Liverpool took them to, what, 97? And they, they have, what, 100? Did they, did they breach the 100? No, they got 99. Yeah. <clears throat> the, thing, the, the thing is to win. Like, like, literally, and we were like this the, <laughs> yeah. the, the whole season. Like, because of City now, you either got to win 30 out of 38 games <laughs> or break 90 points in it to, to win the league. Yeah. That, do you know how mad that is? Literally. 30, to win 30 games out of 38 is absolutely insane. And like that, that's the marker in it. So you need, like I said, you need everyone I think to, to, to rally handic- around. I think City need to be handicapped. They got to start every game with 10 players. <laughs> So fine. next season, <laughs> Kevin De Bruyne is a year older. I'm trying to find like things here. Kevin De Bruyne is a bit older, but they bought cover teach fine. Um, I mean, they still got Pep, man. He just needs to go. Yeah, <laughs> I think, and, and it's like it's like what you said, right? Pep said, "I'm going to replace in order to keep winning. I've got to replace players." He said that to Rio. He said what he said. He asked Rio this mm. this question. When you won your first title at United, was it the same team as you won as the team that won your last title? But Rio said no. Oh, he said, there you go. The, how many titles you won? He was like, mm, seven. Six. Yeah. It's like, Jesus. <laughs> he said, there you go. Yeah. He said, you have to keep refreshing. So Why I think Pep... You won six prems. So what? I think even if you say, all right, De Bruyne is getting older, you think Pep's not already... Pep well, and Chicky yeah. are not already looking yeah, at Yeah, but he's on the... And, uh, all right, you... who can we bring in? Who's next? Who can, who's in the academy? Is there anyone in the academy that we can bring through? No? Okay, all right, let's go and find someone that can do what Kevin's good at doing. And the thing that's slightly annoying to me is that he, Pep don't look like he's slowing down. He's like, he, like oh, he enjoys course. being here. Yeah. Like, toward the end of Barcelona, when Jose came, you could see he looked a bit wary. You could tell he didn't really like his time at Bayern Munich because it was a bit too easy. He quite didn't win the Champions League. He just looks energised here. Like, he's like, right, what's next? Like, chasing the treble, chasing the Champions League. Done that. I think I, he, he I, I watched an interview, or something. <laughs> not an interview, I watched a, like a meeting that he had, an exit meeting almost, that he had with Fernandinho. And you saw yeah, that. Yeah, I seen that, yeah. And he was like, and then Fernandinho, he was asking him, are you going to get into management? And he was like, no, nah, no, nah, it's not for me. And then he was like, I knew from 26, I wanted to be a manager. Wow. And you can see that the, the love yeah, he has yeah, for like, coaching yeah. and, man- and managing. It's, it's, no, this guy's... As to keep point, yeah. this guy's here for a while. Well, how is it different to Fergie's win? I mean, Fergie won what, 13? 13. 13 Prems? Yeah, there were yeah. some breaks in it. He won 13 Prems. I hear people lamenting now, oh, it's boring. See, I'm like, hold on. We went for a period where every Man week United. we knew Man United weren't losing. You could turn on the TV in the 88th minute. Dominance. And it was, they were 1 0 down, and you would still be like, they even had the referees win. in their pockets. But the, I think the scary thing is so with, with Fergie, it was like, Two, no, nothing for a couple of years. Three, nothing for a year. Two, so over like twenty five years or whatever of management, it was thirteen trophies in it. Thirteen prems, thirteen yeah. prems league titles. I think with Pep, if he stayed for another seven years, he could win seven prems. I and I think, think I think that's where the difference I don't think is. He wins the next two or three prems in a row. I don't think so. I don't think so. He might not. But who, do, who, do you think that another team steps up and just does better or do you think they just I think a combination of the up. two. I think a combination of the two. I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get cooked for this. I talked to you about this before. This Chelsea thing, man. I'm telling you. 
If they get the ingredients, it's one of those not, teams not, where next, not next season, nah, the season after. Season okay. after, it's one of those things where if they get the ingredients right, it's really going to be amazing, or it's going to be really bad. There's no middle. Yeah, There's no I middle. agree. But young team, if Poch can basically do the Tottenham thing, but with better players. And I, better, I actually better think, resources as well. Man, I think in a couple of years <laughs> we're gonna have these young guys running around the league like, like buying like <laughs> buying music on steroids, bro. I think I think next season will be the marker of how dominant City can or will be. Yeah. So Arsenal have got their blueprint of what they what they can do. And Liverpool players, Liverpool have shown they can do it. Newcastle, will they will they will they nope. kick on? No, nope, they will not. Debatable, you know. Nope, that means. And then you've got you always can have Man United in the mix. And Pop- I'm not dismissing them saying they're gonna fall off, but we're talking about challenges yeah, for yeah, the challenge, title yeah. here. So and then, no Newcastle. Who Newcastle? Yeah, that means. Do you still think at least they're gonna be in the top four? Or I, top six, let's say top six. Top six hundred percent. Yeah. I think they Champions will challenge League. for the top four, but I wouldn't put any money in them making it again. Yeah, Champions League might derail them. Yeah. And Eddie Howe, first time managing in Europe, isn't it? So how does he how does he navigate that for the first yeah. time? Like there's a lot of factors in it. Like we're not saying they're gonna drop off, but there's there's factors for first mm-hmm. time for the players, for the manager, etc. It might it might be tricky. Because like that- we we mentioned like Leicester. How they done? They got yeah. to the quarterfinal, but they had a manager who managed in the yeah. Champions League before, so it wasn't kind of it was new to the club, but not to the manager. But I don't so, think they invested well. They didn't at all. Leicester, yeah, didn't they? Oh, lose? No, they, didn't, they but, lost Kante. Yeah, they lost well. Kante, and then they lost Mares, and yeah, and no, Central. no major investment the next yeah. season. So, uh, whereas Newcastle, they've just brought in Sandro to Um yeah. I can, they're probably gonna go and bring in. Up front, man. One or two players up front, and and the thing is with the prem as well. Like back in the day, like you had the that kind of the top four, or five or whatever teams. You knew you weren't most probably going to win away at one of those unless your team had like a really good day, etc. So as I said, the point I think to win the league, you've got to beat at least once beat the team that you're challenging in the in the title race for. Yeah, but then now you've got the teams like the Brighton, the Brentfords, even Aston Villa now. They're looking to come to your gaff and, and nick a point. And when you go there, they're going to kind of hold their, hold their step in, et cetera. And they're the, they're the games you've got to get get over to try and win the league. Rich. Well, even Brighton now, when you go there, they're balling. There's no there's no park in the bus, bruv. There's no yeah. deep block. They're balling. <laughs> and I, and if you look at where we lost the league, that was it. We didn't lose it because of the games we lost to City. We lost it because we didn't win, certain we games, didn't win right? the games of the rest of the league. So to bring it back then, what we're basically saying is, transfer-wise, other teams need to be a bit braver and get some of those players a little bit earlier. And they need to have a system that can take advantage of those that those players and that potential yeah. before they're now nurtured somewhere else and they come to you at whatever elevated yeah. fee. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 100%. That's probably the only hope. Yeah. And I think that's where the Chelsea mixing bowl is done correctly. They could have that, right? You know, in Cuckoo, all these guys, you know, how many Champions League games has he played? Yes, he's been uh, in Germany largely, but this is a time for him to step up. That could be a big sign in. He's already got Raheem. They're going to have Jackson, um, Mudrick. Like, there's so many players where if they get it right, it could be it could be a thing. But it does, it does. I think someone's just going to have to do something really holistic football-wise. You know what I mean? A bit like the whole Arsenal thing was, oh, they're young players, they're playing and they're skinning their teeth, but then a bit of football turbulence and they lost their heads, right? Mm-hmm. Someone's going to have to do something like that. But then the story is they held their nerve. Yeah, they maintained it. And then that kind of breaks the deadlock. And then things shift slightly because then the players you can sign change a little bit, right? You're not just buying, they're not just signing for you because you're paying the most money. They're signing for you because actually you're a title winner. You're a this, you're a that. Do you understand? So... Yeah, let's see. But I, 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 will, I would put a marker down now and say I'm willing to bet that City don't win the next two Premier Leagues in a row. That's being recorded as well. I think nah, they're winning at least one of them. <clears throat> no, no. They're winning yeah. at least one out of two. They'll probably win the two, but I'm willing to say I don't think they do consecutively. Yeah. I don't think they do. So, talking about, again, player power, what do we think of this... This... Um, Actually, no, to that point. Let me come to that later. Man United backing off Mason Mount and looking elsewhere. Is this, are people at Man United finally starting to see sense? 
Have they been to the... In, in what sense? What, in what sense do you mean? Because I feel like... Sense this... in what sense? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the Man United that bought Jadon Santo for 80-something million, Man United that bought Lukaku for whatever it was, million, but that was the Ed Woodward area, Woodward era. <laughs> but they've done it know? last season with Anthony as well. Yeah, so it's not, the, it's the, not the club really that paid eight million for Anthony from was Ajax. more, but that was more of a Ten Hag. All right, so a new manager comes in. They they usually always say, "All right," or he will say, "Look, I'm coming from you. You you snapped me up from this club. Yeah, I need him and him and him. Yeah, but not at any price, bro. Eighty million, Anthony. Yeah." And then now, well, it depends Chelsea, on what it depends on how Ten Hag sold him. Yeah, but Mount is a Mount is a more accomplished player than Anthony. You could argue, right? Yeah, he's, he's, yeah. he's had more top level games. He's played for his country probably more times. He's played out at a tournament. Yeah, and they are not willing to go past but much fifty five million apparently. But much like okay, so there's two things here. Yeah, number one, much like the English tax, there's a Brazilian tax, right? Any kind of Brazilian player, as long as someone says, no, nah, they're good, they're sick, and you show them a two-minute YouTube clip, here we go, slap the money down, right? I, number I, one. I don't know, man. I know that's facetious, but number one, <laughs> I, it, it is, come on, let's be honest. Any kind of Brazilian player that's got a half-decent name, people just go, oh, he must So why did that put with Bruno to Newcastle then? How much did they pay for him? 30 mil. There you go. Yeah, but that's Newcastle. Yeah. Yeah, come on. No, I, 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 I do United. think Man United overpaid quite substantially for, uh, for uh, Anthony. Uh, uh, Brazilian tax for Anthony would have been 60 million. 60. He, played in, he played in the Dutch league, bruv. Yeah. Like, yeah, but Ten Hag wants him. Yeah. Ajax, you're, we're he wants you one of our best performers. Yeah, but he wants Mount. That's my point. Are they learning the lesson now? They're saying, actually, we're not going to get taken to the cleaners. Obviously, we've got a takeover on the horizon whenever they pick who the bloody hell is. But Mount, I, but, but Mount hasn't been... All right, like you said, he's proven, but mm. he was on a bit of a dip yeah, before injured. he got injured. Yeah. Well, also, did he go? We his contract. How am I United? Why am I paying? Big exactly. Money for so there's a number of things. So yeah, it's yeah. Not, like, let's be honest. Like if 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 Mount was on perform, yeah, and he was in the team mm. and he had two years on his contract, they, yeah, Man United would have definitely paid that fifty five. You have no <laughs> option but to. it'd be like seventy five. No, they, <laughs> no, they want. They, but, apparently, Chelsea wants 60, 65 mil. Um, but that's just not the case. So you don't he's, think it's a, a sign of. Manchester United be more prudent. You just think it's circumstances. It's You're circumstances. not buying it. I think it's a bit of both, to be honest. Like, yeah, I circumstances. I, I, I generally don't think you can look at someone in the last year of their contract who hasn't played for like the last kind of... I don't even know last time Mount played, to be honest. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah. And then, Is that through injury or not being... No, no, like, he's injured. Like and then... No, he, he got dropped because he wasn't performing. Oh, did, oh Okay. Who did it, Joe? Yeah, I think, I think, I think he did. Sure, Lampard dropped him. Lampard wouldn't drop him. No, I don't think he. I don't. I think he came out out of the World Cup and he didn't have the best of games. And there was those clips going around of him just constantly giving the ball away. Um, and then his perform just was doing that, and then he just got injured, and then yeah, pay, paying that sort of money for someone in the last year of their contract who's not at the top of their game. Is insanity. Uh, so yeah. I, like, I wouldn't be surprised if they're like, <sighs> all right, we could do forty mm. just because it's Mason Mount, he's English, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anything, anything higher than that, I can't. Yeah. I can't even think someone who's been in the last year of their contract who has gone for a substantial yeah. amount of money. So they're not Chelsea shooting themselves in the foot, potentially. But then he might, he might sign a contract, isn't it? Like, but he's made it clear he wants to leave. Well, he wants to leave because he didn't get the contract he wanted from Chelsea. Yeah. But if you look at what Chelsea and Chelsea doing, have made it clear they're not giving him that. They've they got ready made so it's a case for of, him. Yeah, so exactly. Even if he exactly, even if they, so they're not really shooting themselves. They don't like, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. like you can kind I mean, of chill for a bit. Foot, in the sense of that's money walking out of the door. Not really, because they didn't pay for him, did they? So yeah. no, but it's potential. It's opportunity. I know, I know. I see that, but like well, you can see the opportunity yeah. cost as well. I'm not yeah. paying him that three hundred grand a week. So if he wants to go somewhere else, I'm saving that money. I didn't pay for him. It kind of is what it is. Yeah. You're right, though. For the sake of five million, do you just let him go and get that money in? Yeah. Um, but you I never mean. know. Like he, he might play under Poch, and cause remember, we're talking about the old regime in it. We don't know what Poch is going to do. Poch might, he might play and do quite well. Get a new contract. And, and, and just because we never bought him doesn't mean we haven't spent on him. Wages, training, no, all of that. Development. When, that's when, still. That's still. I know. I know. It's a sunk cost. I know it's gone. Yeah, because when you hear clubs talk about that, when it they talk about fees, 
when it's a player from the youth team, yeah, they don't talk they kind about of it because it's net, net because you pay everyone, whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah. But I mean, it's still an opportunity to recoup money. Yeah, I think for the sake of five million, it it it's, it sounds like they didn't really want to get rid of him, and if they were going to, they wanted the right money for him. Um, so the the jeopardy of losing him on a free or him being able to sign a pre contract in January clearly doesn't worry them enough. Yeah, fair enough. You know, clearly doesn't worry them enough, but. Yeah, I think I think it's I think it's a bit of both. I think Man United have to start moving like that. They can't just be the club that when they call your agent knows right, <laughs> we've, we've made it. Like you, you can't carry on being like that. And then none of your big transfers have have shown value. None yeah. of them. Anthony, um, Sancho, Lukaku. Apparently they're looking to they're looking to listen to offers for Sancho. Yeah, but who's gonna buy him now? Especially on those wages. That's a madness. And again, but go, sorry, going back to Mount, does he improve Man United anyway? Well, like, I know people no, say, oh, yes. I'm, I'm not a Mount fan, so but the, I'm the wrong I guy don't, to ask. Like, I'm not saying Mount is a bad player, yeah, but yeah. It, like we he keep is. talking about people, sorry, teams trying to get to the next point and challenge City, etc., and improve what they've done previous seasons. And I look at Mount, I even can take the, the Havertz, transfer as well like I, I don't see even those players improving the two teams they're linked with that's just my I opinion. think if the stuff people say about Havertz on paper comes to fruition he does improve us the what's, mouth what's thing, that um, so a couple of things one his his physical profile right we have no one of his physical profile in that front three yeah. Right? Yeah, he's quite strong on the ball yeah, yeah he's strong yeah, on the ball that's he's an cool. improvement that's an improvement um, apparently his movement Again, when you read all the coach analysis, me, I don't see what he plays. I'm not going to act like I've seen it. Yeah. But apparently, his movement is, coaches love it. It's fantastic. His work off the ball is great. And you if know, you these get, are if, you, if you get a chance, go and watch the goal he scored in the Champions League final. Yeah, I've heard about this. It was Mount's pass to have it, but just watch it. Watch yeah. It if you get so there's a few things where Alteta looks like, right? Here's another player, to your point, that can execute how I want to play up there. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are speculating that he's going to do that left eight position that Xhaka did because he can he's got the technical ability to but then when he's up there his physical presence can do that and knowing Arteta bro, he's going to try and do some free flowing front free like football manager type thing in there. I don't know bro. And, and also I don't think Jesus comes out of the team right so now he's thinking I'm going to have Jesus with that work rate Havertz with that work rate and I've maybe now Jesus will not come back as much he will stay in that zone he says, hopefully, but I don't know. So I, I think if you think about the lack of depth in our squad, anyone that comes in and is in and around that level, he's young as well, 24, you know, is, is a full international. If he can get to uh, one or two levels higher than we've seen at Chelsea and closer to that potential people think he's got, he improves us. Like, there's so many things he will do um, mobility-wise that Xhaka wasn't giving us. We, we yeah. were not cheating, but he did well, but he wasn't going to be able to continue doing that, right? Um, so I do think he improves us. Does he take us to the next level? Collectively, he moves us forward. But it's not like signing, I don't know. It's not like going and signing. I was gonna say I was gonna say Mbappe, but that's too far. But you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not going and signing someone like who's done everything. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. It's not like going and signing Kunku. It's not it's not that, right? Even though he's not he's not proven in our league, he's done it in Champions League. He's he's yeah, a you know certified he can, bad boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um Mount. I don't know. Everyone keeps telling me off the ball, you know, without the ball, tactically, it's fantastic, blah, blah, blah. I think even Roy Keane said, he's like, I don't see Mason Mount improving my United ridiculously. But then again, with these new managers, these are Tetas, these Ten Hags, they have specific systems. They have specific behaviours they want from people, specific phases. And clearly, Mount must fit that. But I have never understood the Mason Mount hype. I'm not saying he's a bad player. He's a good player. But the way they talked about this guy... Yeah, like he if, you, was if you look at the um, like the crop of, the, the crop of English players coming through and yeah. stuff, he wouldn't even be in my top ten. Yeah, I don't think. I agree. I agree. I know. I that fully is. agree. I fully agree. And then back to the other end of the spectrum, this Mbappe uh, soap drama that's uh, that that's going on over there. I read an article about about how the part his mum plays in his uh in his, like, off-the-field football dealings. And, yeah, apparently she's a... She's, a, she's on a, job. She's on job. Mm -hmm. She's on job with them and on job with him. 
So even to the point where they were saying, uh, you know, if you praise him too much, they'd be like, relax, he didn't kill cancer or anything. He's just a football player, okay? Just relax. But she was literally playing PSG and Real off each other. Now, they said she was doing it for months to the point where Real were weeks where they thought they had it in the bag. Oh, wow. So they were like, they are seasoned football agents that can't do this. And she's done this. But ultimately, the decisions are his. She swears, she says, she always repeats it. They're always his. What do you think is going on here? Or is this just, this going to happen when you're the next alien in line? Because I think, it, I, I ultimately think it's a power play, right? You think he wants to stay at PSG? No. But, if they're going to offer him something alien. He's already got alien. He's on 700 grand a week or something stupid. There's always room for more. <laughs> Yeah, the bank account doesn't stop exactly. zeros, does it? There, there, there's always room for more. Now, ultimately, I think it's this, right? Look, he's turned around and said, I don't want to, I'm not renewing my contract, mm. right? If you want me to leave, give me my money. Yeah. And they turned around and said, well, you're not leaving on a free. You're going to go this far. But he's like, well, technically, I don't have to. I can sit here and just collect a check. But here's the thing. Who's, is he really going to do that? Can, is he really going to sit and collect a check? And are they really going to just leave him to rot in the reserves? I like, think, no it's, way. It's a power play. Who's got the power here? Who's Whoa, really going to... When he's that country, he's got the power because the one-year option can only be triggered by him. Yeah. So for when you signed that contract, you gave him all the power anyway, right? And they're in a lose-lose. Like you say, if he stays when they wanted a fee for him, you can't have someone like Kylian Mbappe not playing. Mm -hmm. Captain of France, now... Can't not pay him. He, he's gonna, you're gonna pay me. He has to play. He has to play, right? If I'm Luis Enrique, you don't. Well, he's Luis Enrique is probably mad enough to take that that stance with Mbappe. You know, I don't Mbappe. think he cares. I don't think it's it's Luis Enrique. I think it's the hierarchy. No, no, and, and Mbappe. Um, I think Enrique is just gonna come in, and if he's if they say yeah, you can play him, you'll play him. Yeah, I think if Mbappe leaves on a free next year, that's the most sensational free transfer in the history of football. Oh yeah, because he'll command. That is a whatever. Joke. Like, you know, um, we, we, know, we all know where he's going. You know, we're talking about a million a week is madness. If he goes in a free transfer, he's getting a million a week in a European league. One million percent. Base. And that's base. Like, Nets, B. Yeah, like, Nets. <laughs> yeah. Then you've got the image rights, bonuses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all know where he's going, right? Real Madrid. Yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah. 52 I, million I, euros a year. I think when he went to, um, <laughs> when he went to PSG, I thought he saw PSG at like, the next kind of big thing, the project. Yeah. Again, win the Champions League there. Yeah. He can be the first one to win it there, etc. So if you compare PSG to Man City. Really? Yeah, because yeah. like, no if, you can, if you compare PSG to Man City, I think you might have said this already. The way that they've managed the clubs is, is totally different. So yeah. Man City have started at the bottom. Yeah. We're going to get our training ground in. Mm. We're going to get the infrastructure. We're going to do all that. PSG, bought PSG, and then he's tried to splash all this money on the first team. Hasn't worked out. Well, they, they, and the they, Florentino Perez model of club they, haven't, they haven't blooded it. PSG should be a powerhouse. Like, they're, they're, they're big in French football. But in terms of the product, like the, the players that they're producing through academy and whatnot, other than no, Abby Simmons, so, yeah, we who, touched, else, who else is coming through? We and I think he's that. seen that and been like, this is what it should have been. We haven't. We they got to the Champions League semi final. They yeah. didn't even get to the final. They got to a final. They got beat by Bayern. Bayern, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So, so yeah, they final. got they got to a final. 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 I, I think yeah. yeah, he was expecting more yeah. from from PSG than what's yeah. come out of it. Neymar was there. Was it Neymar there when he went there? He was there already? No, he might have been. Or they came. Yeah, Neymar's each, been yeah. there six years now. So he must have been there. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Twenty seventeen. So, yeah. so I hear what you're saying, and we touched upon this. I think either in the group or yeah kind of maybe briefly on the pod, right? They have missed out on a wealth of talent Massive. within oh, yeah. the French academy system. Yeah, right? even well, that, that, that Parisian... That, yeah, exactly. that Parisian net. They have missed out on so many young talents that have either gone to other clubs mm. or gone abroad. Yeah. Right? And it's now they're seeing uh, this, like you said, this Galactico... Superstar model is not working. We had three of the best attacking players in the world yeah. and still couldn't do it. Yeah. Right? Mm. They brought, they've had manager after manager. They've had 
talent after talent. They even had Sergio Ramos come through the door. Yeah. Right? And it's not worked out. Let's just shift everyone out the door, possibly even Neymar to a point. They, I think they were hoping Mbappe was going to stay and become the focal guy. The yeah, guy Neymar goes. It was yeah. finally going to be his team and they're going to bring in through all, the, all these youngsters and let him lead that. And he's turned around and said, no, nah, I'm cool. I'm not, I'm not here for that. I want now. I want instant gratification. I want trophies. Yeah. He wants the big one, isn't it? Like, he's, he's got trophies. He's got countless leagues. He's got the World Cup. Champions League, man. Like, you can... Like, well, Champions League at PSG would certify him, though. I think so. Oh, yeah. That would crystallise his, his legend. But then do you sit around and hope for the best? Or do you no. go and... But saying that, though, would you say since he's been there, Enrique will be the most estab- established manager he's had? Yeah, he, could... he didn't have Cancelo, Ancelotti, did he? No, he, yeah, yeah. he had the guy before Potticino and... Yeah. Portugino, it wasn't the guy who wanted to do the two yeah. show. Oh, two, yeah, two, yeah, yeah, two, no, yeah. two. Yeah. So like, they they could potentially win the. I think it was Tuchel that got them to the final. Yeah, yeah, it was. They could potentially win the Champions League with Enrique. Like he's an established manager, knows what he's doing. I think if it doesn't work out with Enrique, it it, it won't work out over anyone at PSG in terms of management for, <laughs> for Mbappe. Well, goes back to what we said earlier. A few things have to come together: manager, the off the field operations. Um, the right balance of 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 players, and they made some non big signings. Um, but I think he's I think he's got to go. I just find it strange that you've come out and said that to then say no, I'm staying, I'm staying. I'm just letting you know that I'm not signing a piece of paper in one year's time. You have but, to tell them now. But apparently, when he signed the contract last year, yeah. when it, when it, we had this drama, yeah. that he had to let them know this summer. That he wasn't signing yeah, at them, the end of the season. Not all of us. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But yeah. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. Yeah. At that point, he knows what he's doing. He's yeah. doing, but he's doing that. It's a, it's I'm telling this is why I say it's a power swing, right? It's a power play. Because he puts it out in the ether. Yeah. In a way, I'm letting you're letting Real Madrid know. You think they forgiven him though? He, he had to apologize. No, he probably could apologize. To Madrid. Perez. The, he he apologized. Uh, fair. Two weeks before he announced that he's not signing, he apologized to Perez. Mm. That's what I'm saying. It's all, it's all. Apologize first. Tell Real Madrid, PSG, I'm not staying. I'm not staying. Yeah. Let them know I'm I, publicly. I'm I'm all, I'm gonna I'm available. Yeah. Real Madrid on. Let's see how Real Madrid move. Let's see how they react. That lets me know if if that door's still open. Right. Because like you said, they were pissed. Yeah. Because they pretty much thought they had it in the bag. Mm. So does, let's say he goes there next summer, does he go there as their number nine? Well, this is the, this is the <laughs> other issue now. Because he wants to play off the wing. He does not want to play through the middle. But you don't... But you you've don't, got Vinny. You don't move Vinny. I don't, I don't care if you're Mbappe. You don't move Vinny. And you've move got Vinny Rodrigo who's performing. Move Vinny for the first time. Nah, I, I don't think I don't do. think you do. I disagree. Yeah, Nah, I don't know. Nah, I, don't, I, I don't. mean, I wouldn't give myself that problem. But you <laughs> can't tell me. You can't tell me tomorrow if your coach, you're picking Vinny over Mbappe. You're 100%. Not it. For Real Madrid, I am. 100%. 100%. For, for what Vinny's done over the last two, three years. For Real Madrid. We've got, I, you, yeah, you can't. And the last season, just the last season bro, as well. You'll be yeah. good side, your phone will start ringing. You'll be like, why are you ringing me? But, uh, but it's Florentino. <laughs> <laughs> Pack your bags. <laughs> you're but, mad. But no, but this is the thing what we said where. I'm not right in, Mbappe played with Neymar and Messi, but he's still kind of the biggest guy there because the other two are the latter in the stage of their career. Man, when I yeah, won the World Cup, I, I, I don't, you, know, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Mm. To go to Real Madrid, you're not going to be the biggest fish in the, Who's in the ocean. Who's bigger Mbappe at Real Madrid, bro? <laughs> what are we doing there? <laughs> Who's bigger but, than Real Madrid? So, you're, so, you're, so you're just discrediting everything that, that Vinny's done over the like just because Mbappe signed. signed and, where him, said, go? and where does Vinny go? I asked you a question. And where does Vinny go onto the bench? One second. Who at Real Madrid is bigger than Mbappe? Right now, Vinny. I, I, I'm telling you, <laughs> he, he, he lands there. He lands there. You can't just say, oh, because I'm Mbappe, I get, <laughs> I get all the applauded straight away. Pete, I'm going to give you one more chance. Oh, well, I will back it up. If, if Vinny hadn't performed how he had over the last two years, I could say, you know what? Mbappe goes there. He's the guy, whatever. So you're saying, just because he's Mbappe, he goes there and he's the guy. No, it's not just because he's Mbappe. He's World Cup winning. <laughs> Multiple league winning. Yeah? 
for us, Captain. I don't, I don't okay, think... other than the World Cup, what's what, what's Vinny done? Other, other... But, I'm, but I'm no, but I'm saying other to you, don't the World Cup. <laughs> it's not the Carabao Cup, bro. Yeah, I know it's not. The, I know, I know it's not the Carabao Cup. But what what no? But what I'm saying I, is I no. But what I'm saying is like he turns it. He's like, okay, yeah, I'm Mbappe. I won the World Cup six years ago. Yeah. But Vinny's like, okay, granted, you won the World Cup six years ago. Six uh, years ago. I've yeah, it'll be 2024 when he goes. Okay, yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, six years. So, how 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 long do you say? Oh, I won the World Cup. I'm I'm Mbappe. You can't be like, oh, I won the World Cup. I'm Mbappe, so I must get everything. You got to take everything no, into context. It's not just that. It's not just the World Cup thing, but I, Vinny is Vinny is cold as a player. He's cold. He's he's he, in his position right now. He's up there, the best in the world with Mbappe, right? Yeah. But my point is, if we take both of their careers to date. We can't say that Vinny is a, is bigger than Mbappe. It's not possible. No, I didn't say he's a, he's a he's a bigger player. I said if you t- if you go into Real Madrid, yeah, I think you if, said he's not the big player anymore. That's what you said. Yeah, I don't think I don't think he goes to goes to Real Madrid and he's instantly the big player. You got to say right, I'm coming in there with with Vinny, <laughs> who's. <laughs> Well, you could laugh. Okay. All you right, can, right, right. You Let me ask you a different question. And Bate last... walks in the changing room and puts his nuts on the table and no one tells him anything. I, I don't agree, Listen, man. No, but... All right, let me ask you a different question. I think if Benzema was there, then then now we're talking. But Benzema goes... Let me ask you a different yeah. question. Yeah. yeah, go on. When he goes to Real Madrid, who is a big player with him? Vinny, I said Vinny. Not Tony, not Luca. No, nah. because nah, they'll be they'll be they'll be gone. Like way Tony just signed them, oh, yeah, one, yeah, one, yeah. One, one, Modric as well. One year, oh, yeah, one year, five, five. Both of them just signed um, one year. They're out the world. They're on the way out. There's no one else. Literally, there's no one else. I, I, Couture, I don't know, man. Maybe Couture. Yeah, like I'm, I'm not discrediting. That's the more reason why I think I'm, Mbappe goes there. He's the big man. I'm not discrediting. I'm not discrediting Mbappe at all. But I'm saying like. For, for what Vinny's done over the last... And it, let's say Vinny has another okay. stellar season without without Benzema there, yeah? yeah? Let's say he scores like 25 league goals and then Benzema comes in. He's, he's going to be like, oh, well, Benzema's Mbappe here now. Mean. Oh, there you go. No. Mbappe, what you mean? So yeah, Mbappe goes there. No, I'm not like, saying Vinny would wait. accept it, but the facts... Good. Question. Yeah. Haaland's now available on the market. Who do you take? Haaland or Mbappe? Depends what you want, though, innit? The way I asked you, bro. If you're Real Madrid, you're Ancelotti, Haaland's available. For the, for the ease, I'll take Haaland because you don't have to have the where does Mbappe play conundrum. Could you play Haaland down the middle and you got Vinny and who plays on the right? Rodrigo. Rodrigo feeding him. Rodrigo doesn't really start, though. That's what I'm saying. No, he does. Yeah, he does. does. Mm, I read an article to the, the different. For the other day, Sometimes but. they pull Valverde out, out there um, And he kind of does the Right wing, right, that, right mid job But Man lands in, in He lands at the Bernabeu And it's a packed stadium well, Remember He's, he's, not, he's, not, landed, he's not landing this But I'm saying He's not landing this summer He's landing next summer It's even worse next summer Why is it worse next summer? Bro He's coming on a free transfer I've probably paid him more Listen <laughs> Where do he land next summer? The king is here. They will treat him. Mate, just because you know he, how they'll treat him. They'll treat him like how when Ronaldo went there. I guarantee you. Bro, he's the next alien in line. I think he'll be bigger than that. Yeah. I think he'll even get he's a the next reception. alien in line. The only thing that will temper it a little bit is people will feel like he mocked the club last year, innit? You know the yeah, majesty, possibly. They, they, they take it. I, I, I think they don't they won't even care about Bro, that. Bro, he will be yeah. mad. Kylian Vinny Mbappe. will have to settle. Let's let us let us see, man. Like I'm not saying it's not a big transfer. I'm not saying he's not a big player. I just think it's a discredit to, to Vinny to say, why? You're adding two, th- your two things can be true. Vinny can be amazing and Mbappe can land and be the big man. The, the two things can be true. Me saying that Mbappe is going to go there and land and all of a sudden he's the new Benzema, he's the new CR7, doesn't slight, it's not a slight on Vinny. It's just, I think it is, man. Just because of what he's done over the last two, three years. No, bro, you're doing this football fan thing. It's not, it's not what, a football fan thing. Do you, know do you know what? I think this season coming will be the decider though. Yeah, that's what I said. Oh, if he slaps, right, right. if he slaps, I, I, right. I'll tell you why. Right, they've brought in Hosselu, yeah, right as the as the front man. So he's he's not Benzema on a one year load. Exactly, he's not Benzema. He's not Haaland. He's yeah. not Mbappe. Right. This year they're pretty much setting it up for Vinny to be the man. Yeah. 
right? We're, we're, we're going to put, put our trust in you to carry us, lead our, our attack. If Vinny steps out this season, puts up 12 plus goals, 10 assists, That's good matter. and Real Madrid go land the title or even get to the Champions League final, which is what they're expected to do, then I'm sorry. It's not gonna but Mbappe is gonna have to. He's gonna have to yeah. have some. Words. I remember everything I said was caveated on him going there next season, and Vinny performing at his level. I, I assume that Vinny is not only gonna perform at his level this year; he's going to get better. We've not even seen Vinny final think, form. No, no, you no. still you feel, still think. However, that would be true of Mbappe as well, <laughs> <laughs> and you'll have another season of match at the French league. Doing the Champions League. His head's not in it. He's gonna be he's gonna be this, have another this, year this of being well. France captain, blah blah blah. He's gonna if he goes there next year on a free, <laughs> well, they'll probably drive the May back on the pitch to unveil him. <laughs> <laughs> the way that, that Real Madrid will land him. I can even, I can see it now. It's gonna be crazy. Bro, Whole there's production. no way Vinny, as well as he's doing, how well has he played for two years? He's, he's yeah. been mad Vinny for two years, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, man. Year and a half, Mbappe's been mad Mbappe for how long? Four years? Five years. Five years? I know, but... No, six you're, even. You're, you're, going, you're going somewhere... Yeah, yeah, you're going yeah. somewhere new. 17. You're going yeah. to a team that is not... Key. It's not like they're just faltering. Like, Key. Real Madrid... Uh, the when Devils. Real Madrid by Galacticos, oh, they, don't make those, they don't make those mistakes. So, so, hold on. So, you're telling me... I know what you're saying. Ultimately, your point is they're not going to bench Vinny to play Mbappe, right? No, it's not even that. I just think like Vinny yeah. will command as much, if not more, respect than Mbappe does when he lands just because of what he's done. That's that. Oh, fair enough, man. He'll command yeah. we'll a lot see of respect. In it. He'll command a lot of respect. But whether we like it or not, Mbappe is now at that level of Superstardom. Yeah, in ball. So, and then now he's going to turn up at Real Madrid. It's like the, it's, it's like the atoms are colliding. It's just going to be, it's just going to be stupidity. This, this um, fake, humble Mbappe that we're seeing now, yeah, it's just going to go out the window. He's going to yeah. be a madness. Wait, where does he play? I think they force it. I think Vinny stays in the wing and he, he takes up this false nine-ish centrally position. Like floating. Yeah, I think they force of. it. I don't think they force it. But don't you lose something from Mbappe if you make him do that? No. His ego will tell you that I want to play where I want to play, but I don't think so. The guy has got everything. He can play off both feet. He but can I, take I, up have positions. We have not really see him play in the pocket, though. So, like, I'm not saying he can't do it. I'm just saying, would why would you do it for the first time at Real Madrid at that level, innit? Because like, well, you can't bench Vinny. And I don't see Vinny playing in the middle. I don't think he's got the... The array of 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 capabilities, the what he does on the wing, the wing play, he does to a very very high level. Yeah, but I don't know from what I what we've seen, <laughs> if you're gonna move one of them two, it's, it's Mbappe, it's Mbappe, and also Lou. play Mbappe at the nine and tell him to respect me. <laughs> if Mbappe I doesn't, I, I'm with with Key. No, no, that's, no, no, that's what you should do. I'm talking about the reality. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When I land. And I'm taking up my million euros a week. And my parking space is next to Florence to Paris. <laughs> <laughs> you're not playing, yeah, you're different. not dislodging. Like, you can't tell me. Anything. I might agree to it for the better of the team, but we have to do that. Let's just be, let's just be honest. When he lands there, he just becomes the new top man there. That's it. Because even the old top boys are gone by them. Cruz is gone. Modric is gone. Probably he lands. How old will we be at that point? 25? 26 mm. next year? Come on, man. It's a game over. We'll, we'll see the birth of the... It was Cristiano <laughs> Messi name off for me. And now it's going to be Cristiano um, Messi, Cristiano, Mbappe, Holland. Like, that's what, that's what the, the next two aliens give me them to. Slapping out to break records. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Even if Haaland went there the same time as Mbappe. Bro, he's not chatting to Mbappe. He's not, he can't do it. Who? Haaland. Like, on a respecting. On the pitch, oh, yeah. fine. Well, I'm not respecting, you're still on your way and you're, you're smashing it, but this is killing Mbappe, bro. He's built the stardust. Like that. It is what it is. But anyway, 
It's cool. We'll see. Man said he'll go there and not be a no spicy store. No, we'll see you there, like. Nah, I hear it. I'm spicy store. I hear it. Oh, it's caveated, but I said that like, will go there and not be the big man. <laughs> nah, that is bad. No, I, I said cannot he. Believe I said that. he shouldn't be. I said he shouldn't. That's be. even worse. No, it's not. I see. I know he will be. I'm saying he shouldn't be. Nah, you're doing too much idealism, bro. Ah, Too much idealism. Respect Vinny, man. Do you want to do you want to touch on the Gary O'Neill sacking quickly before we get onto the? We got to talk about the the PIF. Because yeah, I've got a few. Que- I've got a good question about that actually. But yeah, go on. Let's 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 talk about Gary O'Neill and uh, Bournemouth. So well, I got to give. And I've got to give you your props because this is basically what you've said. It, it is. I was gonna do the same thing. Like, you've been saying it for you, bro, you for it. years in the group chat. He's brought it to the bro. pod. The problem is, I'm not having to put my money where my mouth is. I've made a bet now. It's going to be peak. So now it's all going to go wrong. But I don't, obviously, I don't want to see anyone lose their job. Let's be clear. Some people are saying to me, oh, you know, I don't want to see anyone lose their job. But we're talking about a very specific situation here. And one of the few, it's not like us losing our job. These men lose their jobs and they leave with seven figure settlements. So from a feeding their family point of view, they're going to be good. As a human, it'll still hurt and whatever. But the gas bill will get paid. Mm. They're used to eating it. So let's put that to one side. I don't understand that, bro. Everyone's like, oh, we kept them up. Yeah, that's fine. I'll be, I'll be real with you. I think the uproar, surprisingly, is not actually even coming from Bournemouth fans. I think that... No, it's not. It's not. Yes. The Bournemouth it's, it's fans are out. actually... It's yes. everyone outside. Thanks, mate. Thanks for keeping us, but... Yeah. yeah. We yeah. want what Newcastle have in <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll have a bit of that. Please. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because... So, again, everything's about nuance, right? They bought the club December 2022. They paid 120 million for the club. If you're running that business, that's a lot of money. Your investments are, are, are riding on that. Yes, he kept you up. But that was his first managerial job. You don't have any evidence that he can repeat that over a longer period of time. And you don't have any evidence that he can progress you either. So, I don't understand. I don't understand what, why everyone finding it so difficult. So, Can, yes, yeah, go on. So, I think people are finding it difficult because, as mentioned on the pod before, people just look at what happens on the pitch, innit? Like, not many people take your stance and look at it as a business model and the whole, the whole the thing. The betterment of the club. They've just seen it as, he's come in, he's kept them up after a bad start and he should automatically be given a chance for uh, next season. When, if you look at it, just because he's kept them up, doesn't mean it's, it's right for the business model of the club. Well, even forget going, business model, just forward. from a football point of view, we don't want to be one of those clubs that's always bouncing around the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've just spent a lot of money to buy this club. Thanks, you'd be fantastic. But I literally have five months of your career to judge on. Five. Yeah. Yeah. You've not shown me enough for me to say, yeah, this guy's going to, you're the guy to take us to the next step. You just haven't. You haven't. You've done enough to keep us here. We thank you. And There's you a nice very severance well, well, pay. And you'd have been very well rewarded. You'd have got like a bonus for staying up and all that stuff, which you, I hope you negotiate when you took the job in... Uh, whenever you took it, right? Yeah, so thank you for that. But here's what we're going to do. <laughs> We've identified someone who we feel has the tools to take us to the next step, right? Yeah. So we're going to let you go. We're going to bring him in. We're going to give him a little, we're going to, you know, see, work with him, bring in the, one or two players or the necessary players and hope for the best, right? Build, build. Let's not, let's not maintain, let's build. So what about the, what was thrown at me? Well, that's just, that's just a risk as well. That's a risk as well. Of course it's a risk. But at the same time, it's less of a risk. <laughs> yeah. And apparently they, they tried to get him earlier in the season, but yeah. he said he's going to ride out his contract. So go. it's not someone that they've just kind of plucked out the air. Yeah. They've, they thought about who they wanted to replace Parker. They, they approached him. He said, no, I'm going to stay out the season with, with Raya. And then, he left, he left at the end of the season, so it kind of makes sense. The only thing I would say is that why didn't they do it sooner, if that makes sense? Kind of like, if you knew you weren't going to keep him, why kind of, like the season finished like a month ago? Oh, why? well, maybe yeah. they negotiated severance and yeah, that stuff true. before they could announce it. Like, 
And I'm not going to lie, I was thinking his name looked familiar, but it's the, he, he was at Bilbao for all those years. Yeah, and, and, and what was kind of thrown at me was, well, all right, let's do that. Yeah. Who are you going to get? Yeah. Who are you going to bring in? And I'm like, it doesn't matter. What matters is, as the people that are in charge of the club, they're just going to get someone who they think can do that job. They may be right, they may be wrong. But the evidence on which they could measure him against other people was was pretty small, right? And a very, very specific situation. I've, we've not seen you go somewhere and do that. And you're not learning with my 120 million on yeah. the line. Yeah, you're yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Like, and let's be honest, if you were ever going to get your first job in any other circumstance, it probably wouldn't have been a Prem Club. Yeah. Let's, you know, you'd, you'd probably yeah, have yeah. to do the championship work or whatever. Yeah. So actually... Take that experience. Go and get a really good championship job. Yeah. You'll have credit in the bank to... Yeah. Like yeah. when a job comes up at 100%. the start of next season, which inevitably you will. Yeah. He can throw his CV in there and be like, right, well... Exactly. I've, I think I've the kept first... the Prem team up. Let's see what I can do at this level. I mean, I, like you said, if you're, if, you're, if you're the owner, are you going to trust this guy who's in his first managerial job who's not really had enough time to learn... His start because at the end of the day, their, their biggest, their biggest, the biggest um, point that the owner was talking about was the style. Yes, I was coming to that. Yeah. In which he kept them up, right? Yep. That that didn't that didn't fit with the 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 direction they wanted to go in. Mm -hmm. Cool. We've given you five months experience, and it's a little longer than that because he he did the yeah like no no it was after we before beat them, so, he got the yeah uh, so he he took over um, temporary in end of August and then got the job. Like start of October, I think right? So yeah, pretty much. So let's just say, let's not five months. Yeah, but let's just say you, you've got owners, a whole yeah, season. Yeah, yeah. You've had a whole season of yeah. experience, right? We've given you that. Yeah, you and it wasn't all about... sailing with him as well. No, 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 no. And let's be honest. I mean, you 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 flirted. You managed to stay up. You you, you kept us up. All right, cool, go. Mm. We're gonna bring someone in who has experience. Yeah, he's managed in a top flight in a top European league. Yeah, and kept and and finished mid table. Yeah. Ideally, that's where we want to be next season, mid table, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you can't be mad at that. No, you, you can't, can't be mad at. Now, the risk is obviously we've seen managers come from Spain, try and do their thing in the Premier, and it really bites them really hard. But then you've also seen managers come from Spain and do really well. Exactly, that was my point. So yeah, I'm now in a bet where if Bournemouth don't get forty points next season, I got a full cow, basically. But that's a risk that I'm willing to take. Yeah. 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 And to be fair, like going into summer signings and stuff, like Gary never had to be in, like in charge of transfers, etc. So mm -hmm. that's another risk on top of take, just, just managing a team. Like, Have the they next got season. a director of football kind of approach? Because again, is he the, does he, is he able to work with players he's kind of given that have been identified yeah, for yeah. him? Mm -hmm. Again, that's that whole head coach mentality is a is a slightly different thing. So again, no slight on uh, on him. We think he did a good job. We're talking about him as one of the potential uh, managers of the season, but I can definitely see why this change was made, um, and I can understand what they what it is they're trying to do. Um, they've already signed what's his name? Is it Justin Lerma? No, Justin uh, Clive. Uh, Clive. Justin Clive. Clive. What, no, they signed, they signed Lerma. No, he signed Lerma it. went to Palace. Yeah, sorry, oh, yeah, yeah, Clever. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. got to Palace. Justin um, Clever, they brought him. Yeah. Oh, Boomov. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Announced over the weekend. Stanislas has gone. Oh, Clever's come cool. in. Lerma's gone to Palace. Yeah, okay. So, so let's see. Let's see. But I understood it straight away. But I was getting a lot of usual football fan rubbish. But two things can be true. Yes, you did a good job for us. But now we need someone to do something different. Exactly. Yeah. And just to... Throw out um, more leaving Sheffield Wednesday as well. It's kind of the same. Oh, so it wasn't a mutual really consent thing then. No, no. So apparently, so it's, it's, so this whole Sheffield Wednesday one is a weird one. So they got the the record amount of points in that league without mm -hmm. getting automatic promotion. Mm -hmm. And even before they they qualified for the playoffs, they were they won like a little a little blip. Yeah, and they, there was talk of him being sacked before. The end of the season, they were going to like change, change, mm. but obviously, that's like a whole kind of semi final comeback. And then they won the final. Everyone kind of thought it was a given that he's going to stay. But again, the, the manager was like, sorry, the, the owner was like, it's not the direction we that we want to go in. Like, granted, you've got to promote it, et cetera. But it's the same. And again, 
more outroar from like outside of the the club than, than inside it. Than inside, obviously, a few of the fans are like supporting him because of what he done instead yeah. of getting him up, which is, which is an easy feat. You know what yeah. playoffs are like. Yeah. So yeah, it's just it's just similar in it. Like, yeah. and I think more owners might move to that model in it. Like, you can you can do well, but it's not <laughs> it's not the direction. There's, 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 the, there's a lot on the line now. Yeah. Right. Well, there's more money in the game. There's more reward that ahead. So yeah. The money. And there's obviously bigger risk. You drop down, you you lose a lot of money. We're, we're paying a lot of players. We're taking bigger gambles and paying players and going yeah. after players to try and yeah. reach what, the next level. And I've always said many times, it's easier to change. Well, no, sorry. As a, as a leader, it's harder to change when things are going well. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it objectively, when you've got to a certain stop and things have been and going plateau. well, that's the bit to change. Well, they don't even know if it's plateau yet because they didn't give him a chance. But you'd rather, you're better off changing now than at Christmas when you find out actually, yeah, it's not going oh, well. this is going downhill. Now, not only has someone got to come in and do all the things a normal new person's got to do, they've got to recover a bad situation they didn't, they didn't create, right? Mm -hmm. Which is what all the clubs do. So sooner or later, clubs are going to look at it and be like, well, why do I need to wait to get to that point to make a change? If I've even got any inkling that we could be going in that direction now, just chop now. I mean, essentially, yeah. that's what Brighton did, right? Yeah. Well, they were forced to because Chelsea come knocking. Yeah. They but were they on even the ascendancy. Done, no, but they done that with Hooten. Yeah. 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 Hooten yeah. was like, everyone's like, wow, what have they done? They brought in Potter and they kept they, they, they went up. So, yeah. And I was, they were didn't, forced into it. A real Madrid did get sacked the day after he won the league. Like, who? A real Madrid uh, manager got yes. sacked the day after um, they, they won the league. I can't remember who it was. Well, it happened to Capello. He won the league, but he didn't win Champions League. So he got fired. Yeah, remember that? And then it was someone sure. else. It wasn't hitting. Who was it? Was it Pellegrini? It might have been. Yeah, I think it, it was. Be, it yeah. Might have been Pellegrini. Yeah. So it yeah, have. yeah, it happens, man. Like it might even have been Rafa. Did Rafa win the league there? No, nah, he didn't do great. Oh. There, to be honest. Yeah, I, I feel but. like Capello that happened to because I heard it on a quiz the other day. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's the reason. I know. I'm not gonna lie, um, but I feel like Pellegrini, and, and it was so bad because I remember it was like February. Everyone was saying it from like Feb. <laughs> You knew it was coming. Like, he's gonna lose his job. But he's top. Yeah, but he's gonna lose his job. I remember it being like a running thing. And he won the league and everyone was waiting with bated breath. And then like the day after, like, yeah, hold it. Yeah. Here's your bonus. Peace. Get out. But if it was reported, we wouldn't say anything. We'd be like, yeah, it's normal. Blah blah blah. Yeah. The, so, the, the smaller clubs in it, there's a bit of a, a stigma about them being ruthless. It should yeah. be like, oh, we're a family club, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, <laughs> And it's even more important out there because as I said before, you get relegated, people lose their jobs. You know, it's it's crazy. What club, who, which one of the relegated clubs and like two or three days later, they announced redundancy straight away. Who got relegated this season? Leicester? Southampton. 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 Leeds. Leeds. Most clubs do. Yeah, it's it filters down, isn't it? Yeah. I think one of them two or two of them, they announced redundancies in like the three or four days after. Yeah, most Bang. clubs do that. But they would have been preparing for that outcome because they, as a as a contingency, well, if we go down, yeah. we need to, you know. And again, these are not some of the highest earners at any club, you know, and they're still having to do that. So imagine a Sheffield Wednesday or someone going up and get really, getting really, there's big impact, big impact on, on everyday people, people yeah, who, massively. you know. So the topic of the moment, because my laptop, so I never need a laptop. So you say Mark's not here, but. I'll catch him another time. <laughs> catch him another time. Oh, so, so, yeah. the, so this the, the, the Saudis, Saudis, the Saudis, the the uh, the, the global the PIS, domination. Yeah, the football. If you don't know, if you've been on a, another planet and you don't follow football, but you just happen to be listening to this podcast today, you know the, the Saudis are invested significantly to get a range of of Premier League. Uh, well, European league players to their league spread out across the various clubs. So it's not one league, not one team is going to become super dominant to, you know, make the league better. They have aspirations, apparently. I've not heard this from anyone uh, from from the football side of Saudi say it themselves, but they have aspirations to be a, what, a top five league within 10 years. Yeah. I don't think they'll do that, but I think they will, they will become better than a lot of the European leagues. Like, they, I mean, it's not hard to be better than the Danish league or the Belgian <laughs> league, etc. But 
If they if they have a top ten league in ten years, I think that's fantastic. Oh yeah, massive considering how established leagues are yeah. across the world, for them to be yeah. able to kind of aim for that. So there's a there's a view that uh this uh this sustained investment is ruining the game, which I find really interesting. Um and the sums of money they're throwing at the clubs and players isn't sustainable, it's obscene, it's throwing the market out of whack. Even though I think some of the figures of the actual transfer fees don't don't back that up. Um so what are your thoughts, guys? I was like, I want to come to you first. Do you feel like For sure. do you feel like the uh the approach that Saudi are taking to bolstering in their league is uh, detrimental to the game? Do I think it's detrimental to the game? Why are you smiling at me? <laughs> I'm just saying, isn't it? I, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. All right. Um, do I think it's detrimental to the game? I think it, I think there is a negative effect that is far-reaching in terms of the money that's being thrown around um, and then the effect that has on other leagues who will also inevitably try to keep up and stop these players from going to chase the money in Saudi Arabia, right? You're going to find that there are clubs that are saying, ah, uh, look, agents are going to walk into the room and say, look, my client's been offered this money in Saudi. What are you going to do to keep him? They need to keep him. They're going to have to raise their offer. They can't afford to, but they're going to have to. And then it's going to start a domino effect of other players also now walking into the room and saying, well, this person's got this money. We want this money, right? I mean... I don't think so. You don't think so? No. Why not? Because... We see it already at the moment. Like who? It, happen, it happens in, in the current game at the moment. The market is reset every almost every time there's a contract negotiation. No, true. But I think, what to your point, that's happening already. So exactly. it's not like Saudi have now created a new problem. No, right? no. But I've, never said, I've never said they've created a problem. I've just said they've exacerbated the problem. Well, I, I guess, I, I think if we look at the people that are going out there, um, I don't think we've seen anyone go out there who is wanted or has been desired by another kind of tier one club. Do you understand what I mean? So, apart from Nevers, who has previously shown that he's about the money anyway, I mean, he was captain in the Champions League team and left there to go and play at Wolves and stayed there for five or six years. Right? That tells you about either the control that's, that someone has over him <laughs> or what he's driven by. If you look at everyone else, bruv, they were they're kind of on the way out. Like, you know, um, ZH, but yeah, it's, PSG it's came just a loan. matter of time before it's no longer the players, the fringe players, yeah, or the players that are no longer wanted. It's a matter of time before the players that are being targeted are current top tier players. And what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that is then the clubs in Europe yeah. are now going to have to match or compete. So. It's not a soul, but it doesn't. So it, it, it but this is, but this isn't a new thing, though. Like I think it's not a new thing. The, That's the I thing. Think it's, the, it, the, it happens at the moment. No, I, I just not no, on the same no, I mean, scale. It's not. A, it's not a new thing in terms of Saudi approaching players who have played in Europe before. Like it's only, it's only become known because it's happening to British and English clubs and the English media. Like, oh, we're a bit scared of the unknown kind of thing. Mm. Like when when Ronaldo went in. In December, they they didn't really care. They were just like, right, he he he'd left Man United, but he's going over there. He's got a big deal. Fair enough. Benzema deal, you, you're going on a free transfer, so it's always going to kind of be big money anyway. It weren't until like the Neves deal happened, and like Neves is what 26, and you could say right, it's the first time that they've kind of taken a an established player from the Premiership to to Saudi, but. There's known players played in Saudi already. So why why were they not no, complaining? There's known players. There's known players. But, but, but I'm saying, but why were the media not going? Brother, no one, none of our clubs wanted. All yeah, of our clubs like, are the no, top but okay, but here's the thing. We wanted those players, those, those, players, those players that were going out of there, like Javi, Iniesta was out there. No, Iniesta was in yeah, Japan, like, sorry. Yeah. Javi went out there. Who's the Nigerian striker? Um, that was a United. There's more than one. No, yeah, 
You, I was getting there, but I no, said no, he no, plays for Man United, man. Shut up. No, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yo, yeah. Man. So like, he's out there. Listen, so, uh, listen. Like, no, to your point, there have been players that have gone and retired. Yeah, in, no, I get, I like, in that league, right? But there was never these big sums being banded around around to attract them. No, they were four. They were. They were not, but it weren't like there. that. It weren't like that. Well, remember when Ashley Dunn went, went out there and he was on two hundred and fifty grand a week? Then that's what they were saying. Big man. And the, that's what more jam went out there. Everyone was like, "What the hell is all this about?" Yeah, and he was. Yeah, but he was. But was saying he was getting. Million. He was getting paid like he was two fifty a week. Ronaldo money. That was what Ronaldo was on then. They've been doing that from day. And that was. I, I, and to this day, I don't know how he managed to to swindle that contract. Well, because, because he it was wasn't more like than the players they had. It there. wasn't like he was. The big attraction player in the no, world. No, but he was like a known international, like yeah. played in the Prem. And he was willing like, to. Cool. Right, was, but it wasn't, it wasn't done with the intention. Maybe it was and they just never vocalised it, but it wasn't done with the intention to bring um, top tier players to attract, to say, look, look, we've got this player here. Mm. This is what we're paying him. Come, come, come to death row. It, 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 come to the other side. Do you know what I mean? No, but, uh, it, it, might, but it wasn't. No, but okay, it might okay. have been for lower levels to try and attract Foreign but nationals what I'm saying, to the but, league. And, and, I hear you, but what I'm trying to say is they, it wasn't done how it's done now. They've all vocally come out and said within five years, we want yeah. to be one of the top five, the not ten top years, ten. ten years. They, want, they want to be one of the top five leagues in the world, right? But let's, and, and in order to do that, this is what we're going to do. We're going to start bringing in top tier players. We're going to invest. Right? We're going to start investing in players, in the players. They didn't mention anything about infrastructure. They didn't mention anything about the youth or nothing. They just said, we want to start bringing the best talent to the league and show that we can attract the best players. Yes. So now they've started to, they, they, they brought Ronaldo first. And I say first because he was the first player. Yeah, the big one. Yeah. The first big one since they vocalized their intentions. Yeah. Yes, there have been players before that have gone out yeah, there. Because Cannavaro, Cannavaro, went out there on money Cannavaro as well. was managing out there not yes. long. Xavi was managing out there before Thingy, he came here. the Wolves here. manager's there. Okay, before he came here. Yeah, the Wolves yeah. manager's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Players, have, players have gone out there yeah. and, and, and been out there for years. That's that's very true. I'm not, dis- I'm not disputing that point. But what I'm saying to you is, They've now gone, all right, let's crank it up now. Let's let's put this on steroids. Stop throwing out large sums of money and be, bring players over. Don't care so, what happens over in these other leagues. So why should they? Bro, I don't... Did the I, Premier League I'm care just about saying, Europe? I'm just saying yeah. the wide-reaching effects of what they're doing yep. will soon start to show when these other teams so can't what? compete. Okay, but I, I, no one's still able to tell me, so what? So did what, what did that, that happen about? when China were doing it? Hmm? Did, that didn't happen when China. No, but were China doing was it. successful. China was, <laughs> no, go. but but China, China was, was a flash in the but, pan. No, but China were no throwing throwing yeah, money. Were, yeah, no, no one cared. No. They, were, they were they were throwing money like there was no real well. I could get this in China. I think the, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think I think the fear factor is not the same because with the Chinese, they I don't think anyone thought oh, okay, this is good. this is a serious problem. I think with the Saudis, they know their money's long and they go wow, this could actually really be well, a problem. I think wider than that, we're, we're, we're dismissing the societal things a little bit because. The difference between back then and now is one, the leadership there has changed, as we know. Uh, MBS is now in charge. Two, they have made a concerted effort to make Saudi a place where more people from around the world will come and live, right? So it's not just in football they're doing it. They're doing it across all the sports. They're doing it in business as well, which is the point no one is mentioning, right? Yeah. So this is not them... Um, you know, when other countries do this and try to attract people to come and live there, it's called regeneration. Yeah? It's called uh, it's called progressing their business because the West don't like Saudi and and uh, I don't want to say like they don't like some of how that country is run, their human rights yeah, record, of course, and all of that stuff. Of course, there's all that narrative that. around of it course. is there. It just strikes me as a little bit protectionist because when Europe are complaining about the Premier League, because all the stuff you describe. Spanish clubs, and we'll ask Liam about this when he comes. Spanish clubs, Italian clubs, all this, they've been saying it for years. We can't compete with the money in the Prem. Right? That trickle down is happening. We've got players who are going to, you can make more at Crystal Palace than you can do in a team that's going to finish fifth in Spain. And even then, I don't agree with that either. Right? I've never no, I, that. I get that. But, but we weren't complaining about Saudi money ruining the game when they bought Newcastle. And they're spending the money in the concert. I mean, they're, they're buying players for 70, 80 million. That's fine. Because that money's been spent here. Yeah. I think pe- people are complaining about that. Who? 
There are people complaining about the yeah, fact it's that not, yeah, it's not a, it's state, not a run, state, state yeah. state run ownership. It's not. No, I think there were journalists who got on their high horse, which again I found fantastically um, uh, hilarious about the state ownership of of Newcastle, and they've moaned about it uh, for City. But as soon as the team start kicking ball, because it's here, because it's in the Prem, and we all benefit from it, it quietly dies down. As soon as that that spend and that that leverage is being leveraged to better something out of our stratosphere. All of a sudden, everyone, all hell breaks loose. Bro, in my opinion, this was always going to happen. We can't, we can't, FIFA, UEFA, all these lot have been trying to spread the game around the world as far as they can. They want it to grow, right? They want football to grow everything. They want it to grow for their own benefit. They want everyone else in the world to love football and then pay to watch the Prem, pay to watch the Champions League, pay to watch European teams. The, the, they weren't just going to consume for the rest of their lives. They were going to build something of their own. It was always going to happen. Someone was going to do it. China was, it was never going to work. It's too far. The, yeah, it was too culturally different. And they're not changing for anybody. That country is not becoming 1% more Western. <laughs> In fact, it's becoming less <laughs> every week. I don't even know if you can access Google there, bro. Right? No, the, the, the money just wasn't... No, the money's still there, but the government said... We want this league to go back to being predominantly yeah, yeah, a Chinese yeah, playing league. Of course. So, so that was why the money's not the money ran out. They said that, which is fine. No, there was one club that that ran out of money. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I remember the. I think Chinese it was the club that was uh, managed by was it Sven or someone <laughs> like that? It was that someone. Then. It was. It was someone. It was one of the clubs that had like a European manager, and all the players literally had to. They 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 ran out of money. The mm. club disbanded, and they they. And if we look at most of the football consuming public, right? We we'll get keep getting told it's around the world, it's you know it's Africa. It's in when the football can now be closer to them in terms of time zone. You've got they've got some. Of, they I think they've got one of the largest young populations in the world. So what he's trying to what they're trying to do is is bring, bring the house. things that they live to Saudi, right? And now more players are willing to go there because they see Saudi and they go. I know someone who went there recently and they were like, "This place is not what you think it is." You know, it's. I don't want to say Dubai esque. I've not been. That's, but people are seeing that, and they're like, "I can go and live there. I can take my kids there. I can do this." Whereas I think five or ten years ago, when it was a different regime and it was still very strict, and a lot of Westerners were—I mean, I worked somewhere once where they wanted me to go out and work there, and I was going to live in a compound basically that had all the Western things in the compound, KFC, Starbucks, whatever, in the compound, and that was it. It's different now. Yeah. And and another thing, I think a lot of the players, especially the, for the Muslim players. They're like, well, hold on. I can go and kick ball. I can go and earn good money. I live in a country that understands me and my culture and respect. I don't have to keep making compromises. I can bring them up there. So if the worst thing about all of this is that the European leagues somehow are going to have a talent drain or the, the way they do transfers is going to have to change much in the way that it changed when the Premier League turned up with all their money, I couldn't give a damn. I couldn't scout, care less. Scout harder, B. I don't think. I don't think it affects football. <laughs> and uh, to be honest, I don't think the Saudis will. They will. They will spend, but I don't think they will spend at the level they're doing for forever. Yeah, I think. I think I it will not not bottom out, but it will plateau to the point where you can go there, still earn more than what you might earn in England, but it won't be the money that the Ronaldo, the Benzema are getting because they're the the, the marquee. They're like. Let's let's make it a showpiece straight away. Get people in, and then understand the landscape. And I think, and I think it will settle. I don't think for ten years everyone going out there no, going to earn a hundred million, so hundred million pounds. So one second, I don't think it's going to be as high as this. But I actually think what happens now is it settles down. And to Isaac's point, maybe when you're leaving, when you've got your European pedigree a little bit, right? So maybe the next Ruben Nevers, he doesn't leave, <laughs> he doesn't leave Porto to go to Wolves. He leaves Porto to go to Saudi, right? I disagree. Possibly. Well, not immediately. I'm thinking in a year or two's time, right? Because here's the, here's the, here's the conundrum. Do you go to the Saudi League mm. and forego the Champions League? Yeah. Or do you go to Europe because you want to play in the Champions League, which is the ultimately, res ultimately respected competition, right? And in order to get into that, you need to be in the top European League. Well, so in order to become a top, re top five respected league... Mm. What else is there? Because all you have is the Saudi League, which remember only has I said what, this. eight teams. Remember I said this. How long before there's a competition that includes them lot? 
and they play European clubs. Remember, I said this. Watch. I don't think I, I, it, I, that that will only be when FIFA decides to. Say, okay, cool. We're cool with you. It's money. You what do you yeah. get for FIFA? Love money. Infantino. All these that are complaining now. We'll see. I was gonna make us a stupid name. We'll see some cup. Someone in the group said it's so true. We'll see one cup, and you know who's gonna be doing punditry for it? Gary Neville. Sky fine, will buy but, it. Fine, but They'll how do does all of that, that? How does that become the most respected tro- trophy? I don't because think because you've already, like, already got the club world cup. I don't think got the club world cup. I don't think. Yeah, yeah respect. I don't think it becomes respected. It, I must, it's it's going to start it, by. It needs to be because in well, because doesn't... eventually because it won't matter because it, that trophy won't matter if people are still saying yeah no I still want to go and play in the Champions Mate, League. No, what will happen is the the whole pre season stuff. You will see more teams going out there during pre season. And could you see like when teams go to Thailand, Australia, America, like it's just flooded at the airport in it with like with the fans of those teams. You're gonna see like PSG played question, PSG though. played um how does Ronaldo's that, how team does that compete like, two with weeks the after he went. All right, let me give you a I don't different think example. It will. Let me give a different example. And that's as well. the point I'm trying to make. It's not gonna compete, regardless but of what trophy. I don't think it needs to. Yeah, because, I don't, it's yeah. Nice because that's the Why? one that that's the one that everyone wants to play in. <laughs> I, I think, I Everyone think, wants to hear that chant, that music under the lights. They do, but I go to day, Saudi. What am I? I'm bro. giving this. It's what money or the Champions League. Well, bro, I think I think there's I think there's a couple of things here, right? So whilst he's one player, Neves is a fantastic example of this, right? He was a captain as a teenager in a Champions League team in Porto. Hmm. He left there to go and play for Wolves. His international career didn't suffer. He's He's had however many caps for Portugal. He's played at all the major tournaments they played at with. But what's the one trophy he's never played in? Yeah, but it doesn't look like he cares, does it? <laughs> because he could have stayed and played in the Champions League and he didn't. He left to go stayed to Wolves. Play, stay, mm, yeah. He left to go to Wolves, bro. Do you know what I mean? And I probably think... because he thought that was it. Because a lot of players will look at that as a stepping stone. He probably thought, I'll go to Wolves, I'll, I'll ball out for a bit and attract the attention of a. Well, of yeah, a but to your cup. point, the fact that he even thought that was okay, I think what we'll see now is. It's like any industry that when it gets to a certain level of maturity, right? We will see, you're right, we will have the idealists. Listen, before I even go over there, I need to have done certain things. Mm. I think you're right. But then you also have the others who will be like, you know what? I'm, this is a, I'm in it for the job, right? I'm in, I'm in it for, for other reasons. Would I love to play Champions League? Yes, of course I will. But actually, there's very, very few people who actually get to play Champions League mm. and play it regularly. So I can take that path or... I can go and play here for the sort of money that if I was in Europe, I'd have to play for Arsenal, Man City, Liverpool, etc. to earn. I can do that early, live a nice life and still play for my national team. But they go in. So I think we're going to see those players, we're going to see the diversion of that more clearly. We're going to, do you remember when Robbie Savage used to get a stick? Because he, he talked about it outwardly that I'm going there because they pay better. I think we're going to see more of that. And also, I think the competitions, again, we're going on what we're used to. Take take a step back and look at it objectively. What has made the Champions League the Champions League? Why kind of when we the money when you when your <laughs> when when your kids and are the fact that it's the best of the best. Yeah, but why is it the best of the best? Because of the it, players in it, right? It was the teams that it, it, remember. It was at one point it was only the teams that won the league. No, I agree, but that's because those leagues had those players in it. So why in twenty in ten fifteen years time? Yeah, who who what, would, who would the Saudis competing with? Wait, no, they have their own Champions League out there, the Asian Champions League. Yeah, so then yeah. that would need it would require those other leagues, bro, to I'm start not, investing and bringing the, 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 the players. I'm not saying they're going to have a Champions League that has the prestige of the Champions League, but today in this day and age, the kids they follow players more than they follow clubs, right? Let's be honest, right? They follow players more than they follow clubs. That still if if you have, if you have a if, I'm not saying that the Champions League is going, going to disappear tomorrow, bro, or all of a sudden no, I'm saying people are going to be choosing the allure I, I, I of think what is the other allure I think you're hanging league. on to the prestige of the Champions League too much for... But I think you can't surpass the, the yeah, status quo. Yeah, like I think... You're sounding Graham <laughs> right now. No, no, okay, <laughs> okay, but all right, but um, the only reason I'm doing that is because ultimately that's yeah. what every player hangs their... Hangs their no, that's an assumption. Achievement. Bro. That's an but, assumption but, no, bro. But, but no, but think, assumption. but you think about it. Time Come change. on, man. No, you know, if, if you if you actually look at it in the wider scale, everything changes. Because twenty years ago, if you said to a kid growing up, "Oh, you can play in the FA Cup final," they'd be like, "Yeah, cool." If I said to my son now, "Do you want to play in the FA Cup final?" He'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> "That's what I'm saying." So, like, 
it's, it's an evolution of things. I like, what, let's even rewind. But, what, but there what's was a point always where top been? But what's always been? It's not. It's not always. It's only been up there since it turned into, turned and, into the Champions the League, man. Like, the TV and the music and all of that that we love. Remember, there was a point where even the Prem, if you were a top player, you didn't come to play in the Prem. You went to Spain or you went to Italy. Mm. You didn't come to the Prem. When the money came and obviously other things like Wenger and all of that. When all of that came, Rafa came. When the foreign, when the foreign managers came and they were like, guys, England's not so bad. Don't worry <laughs> about the weather. We can fly in your food. Everyone started to roll up. So at one point, I guess the point I'm making is what we know today hasn't always been. And the same factors that got it to the place it is today, other people can leverage it. Like Europe is not the be all and end all of football. And... They've dined out on that for so long. Yeah. Even to the point where they've done foolishness even within their structures. Why do you think it's okay to let two clubs chop all the money and the rest of the league just do the scraps? Spain, right? Look at the, the madness. I mean, Italy's just been doing the corruption. That's what's killed them. If that was an African country, they would have murdered us. But anyway, <laughs> so I guess my point is I just struggle with this, the moral stand of the Saudis are ruining football, the sums of money. Bro, England has been throwing money at problems for years. The whole reason the Premier League came about was greed. <laughs> We're yeah. going to separate a new league. Sell the rights. Sell the rights. <laughs> it was all business. At that time, it was good business. It was fantastic. So, yes, there is a strand of thinking that laments the Premier League as it is now. The greed, the blah, blah, blah. And they write a think piece to make themselves feel better. Then they go back to loving the game and loving Holland and loving City and loving Arsenal and all that kind of stuff, even though it'll cost you an arm and a leg to go and watch Arsenal play, right? If we're really being thrilled about this, you know, Arsenal have got the, the craziest ticket prices we have had for years, even though we were rubbish for a long time. Do you know what I mean? So I hold no issues with another league throwing their money to try and... Um, build a, a league and a product that people want to buy. Um, Fair enough. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I think it's a fear of the unknown as well, isn't it? Like, they don't know how it's going to pan out, etc. I'm not going there, I don't care. I don't think it's the unknown. I just think there's, I think there is an element of uh, snobbery in that they don't want, 100%. they yeah. don't want it, uh, these outsiders coming in and ruining what's, what's working for them. Yeah, I agree with that. Speaking of which, the Club World Cup final and uh, tournament is in Jeddah next year. Um, for certain, so which which, which <laughs> ties in with all this. Um, but that is, that, but that's moved around. Yeah, no, anyway, I, I didn't so, move around, yeah, but it's yeah, just co- it's there. just <laughs> conveniently that it's in Jeddah <laughs> next the, the next one, right? Um, no, that's which convenient. My football is bad. It is right. I know when I saw that, I was like, hmm. <laughs> come on, bro. Um, so, but that brings me on to my next question. What are your thoughts on the Champions League final? Being somewhere like an America or nope. a Jeddah nah. or uh, in Asia. Nah, that's too much for me. Right, so this is where I go back into football fan mode, yeah? Why? Why is it too much? Yeah, you go. I know, I've got my own reasons. Because you're just doing that to appease masses and, and it takes a little bit oh, away from the <laughs> the integrity of, of the competition. Because like Spain do their Super Cup in... In the Middle East, I'm not sure yeah. where it is. Yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't agree with you. Yeah. These are the same people that, because they pay for TV, your club can buy players for 80 million pounds. Exactly. No, I, I get that. You have massive <laughs> fan bases. Well, no, no. In Asia and the my reason, so, 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 fan trivial. my reason is football fan trivial. I don't care where you play it. This is good. I'm going to sound such an old man. I don't care where you play it as long as it's at night. I don't care. I don't want but, to play the final. No, no we can't in be. Afternoon. It can't be though. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, they're playing at night. Oh, they're... Brother, if Wherever I watch it's at 3 o'clock in the UK, but it's at night, the Champions League is in Australia. Australia. Cool. Nah, nah. nah, 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 nah. You, you, you want to watch... Final. So, you, <laughs> so you'd watch a Champions League final at 9am? <laughs> Get out of here. Keep it in Europe. I would still. <laughs> yeah. I would still. I would. Still. I know, Wait, I would. You know I'll go. You know I would. I'll go full Brexit. No, you Come on. <laughs> <laughs> nine, 9 a.m. You know I was as well. But oh, when I was away, you, you say you're not feeling it. When I was away, when I was away, I'm it's not too gonna weird, lie. Man. It was kind of sick starting my day before. No, if, but no, no, but if you're, you're, still, if you're yeah, on holiday, if you're on holiday, I get it. Like, yeah, yeah, I, know, I know. Like, World Cups is different. Nah, like, Champions League, man. I got like, Again, normally, but, but there's just something, again, maybe it's my programming and that. I'm even steaming this on a Saturday. I'll be honest. 
Right? Yeah, that was an Champions adjustment. Final, I'm not gonna lie. Wednesday, Wednesday yeah, I know. that was an yeah, adjustment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was an adjustment. But it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. More people, more people on the first watch day. It. But yeah. please, you man, wherever you play it, you see that location. Just play it at night. That's all I ask. <laughs> just play it at night. That's so it. you don't. So you don't. So you, you're not caring about the fans in these markets and the, the so fact you, that it's but, but it's a European competition. That's the only thing I'll back you on. It's a European competition. So the majority of play in Europe. But then your, your, your argument stacks up. And I, I would love to see the stats. I reckon more people outside of Europe watch the Champions League than people in Europe. Yeah, What's potentially. And mean, to be fair, the timings but, are off anyway. Because like when we won the Champions League in 2005, it finished mm. the next day because it went to, because it kicked off so, so late. Yeah, of course. So, I mean, I mean, they, look, let's look at preseason, all right? Mm. They go to these markets. Yeah. They put on these Look meaningless us, buy, games. Buy it. Buy the products. Buy the products. Buy us. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then they won't give us an actual. I say us, I'm pretending I'm no, from true. one of these markets. <laughs> but they then won't you got, give but, us. But, an actual... but you got to take the fan aspect. Like, let's say it was in New York. Yeah. What, what are the fans of the the clubs? They've got to fork out to go to New York to watch their team. You got play. to fork out to go out to wherever it is anyway. Yeah, yeah but New York. Apple. Yeah, but New York is. It's quay over there. Like, you know what I mean? Well, Some I mean, man like, might not even I, go because they, got a, little convi- scanner, <laughs> they got, got a little scanner. conviction. <laughs> a little Miss Medina. <laughs> Miss, Miss Medina. <laughs> they, can't, they can't get over there. You know what I mean? It's two, hours, it's two or three hours further than Istanbul. Yeah. Istanbul six hours or something. Five or six hours. Yeah. Granted, but yeah. like I say, if you got a little Miss Medina on your record, like, no, you no, can't, no. they're not letting you in at the borders no, in New York. No. All right. Well, just aside, I think what you're saying has been, um, is valid. But you see some of these football things here, yeah? where you do what Isaac just tried to do and break it down, and that's what I was trying to do with Saudi, where you break it down to actual facts. It's feasible. It's, no, but it's, it's hard to justify the stance you've got, apart from sentiment, because, mm. you know, those same fans, they're putting their hands in their pockets. They're paying for, to watch, to, to watch the Premier League. They're paying for the Champions League. Um, and it's even worse there. One cable network will have the Champions League this one will have the prem. It's almost as bad as what we got here. Same in France, all these places. So it's almost like, well, inevitably, they were going to play the games in those areas at some point. Um, I think there needs to be some kind of middle ground. I don't know. I don't know. Like it, it, I, I'm saying all this now. If they played Champions League final in LA hmm. on a Saturday, hmm. what's that? Eight hours difference. They know exactly at 10 PM, where I, I am, at 2 PM. Bro. I'm in LA. Yeah, I'll, I'll go. I'll try and make that. <laughs> I don't even have to need to go to the game. As this is yeah. it. I just want to. Yeah. So it. and that, and that's why you've heard before we even started recording this pod. I was always that guy. I just struggle with a lot of, a lot of the, especially England, a lot of the entitlement we have here around the game. You hear these pundits talk, the Nevilles, all of this. Oh, there needs to be an investigation into the Saudi buying. Oh, when you had your only foreign investor helping you buy clubs, it was cool, right? Because it's just you. Oh, we need to stop American owners, this and that. So Gary. What is it? Anyone that isn't British, you got an issue with? Yeah. Discuss. So everyone get off their high horse. The game is evolving. We've been peddling, pushing it. We've been peddling it around the globe for long enough. And our people with money have turned up and says, ah, oh, maybe we can do this too. If they're successful, fair play. If they're not, then the players will come back to Europe in it. And that's that. But it won't surprise me if they sustain it. There'll be some new kind of competition or the winners of the of the Asian Champions League will pay something and Sky will buy the rights and those same bleating sheep sheep will be commentating pitch yeah. side catching jokes in their Montclair's but yeah anyway let's see this is this ain't the last you hear of it because when Mark's back he's got some views on this as well <laughs> um, but yeah that's it for another week uh, please like subscribe leave some comments I'm sure you guys are going to have a few things to say about about today's uh, today's episode um, and yeah, thanks for sticking with us. We've got some some interesting episodes coming up. We've got some some guests coming to join us and and work through the, what's going to be another summer of ITKs and <laughs> breaking news that isn't really breaking. All right, cheers, boys. Peace. Cheers. <laughs>